This week on the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we break down the Loki Season 1 finale and discuss the impact it will have on future Marvel projects. Geek boner! Plus, Deadpool interacts with an MCU character for the first time. The Blade movie may have found their director and writer... Black Widow cracks $100 million at the box office, but theater owners are not happy. We've got a Titan Season 3 trailer and more, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, July 19th, 2021. Hey, what's up? It's Taylor Gray, the voice of Ezra Bridger on Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Hey, hey, listener, what's happening? And welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and a movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd! My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. And he's the Nerd. Also joining us uh, from a basement at the end of time, he's commonly known as he who shits himself continuously. But we call him Rug Boy. What's up, Rugs? I've been also called He Who Remains Stupid. <laughs> he Who Remains <laughs> Idiot. No matter what I do, no matter what I read, no matter what I try, I'm still an idiot. Anthony, how you doing? Uh, we should probably tell the listener you're a little damaged, maybe. I'm a little damaged, yeah. I'm a little beat up, but I'm here because I, I care. Well, what happened? You sound like you fucking, you fought Thanos and lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You ought to see. You ought to see Thanos. <laughs> you should um, see the other guy. Yeah. I was in uh, Austin, Texas, Ooh, since this past Thursday oh, for uh, another bachelor party. So, Ooh. a lot of activities. So another one bites the dust is what you're trying to tell us. Now. Another one has bitten the dust. Correct. He well, he was actually. So this is the second bachelor party this summer I've been on yeah, where the guy's yeah. actually been married. Wait, but because what? we because of COVID, what? He, got, he missed his bachelor oh. party. And, Still was felt like he was owed that. So, oh, does that change oh. the nature of the bachelor party at all? No, no. Okay, great. No chance. Just want to make sure. No chance. If anything, it's made everyone just a little crazier. <laughs> had a, <laughs> year, already... a year to think about yeah. it. And the wedding, everything's done. This is all you got to do now. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you had fun out there, and you might as well go because eventually the bachelor party is going to dry up, aren't they? Until we get to yours. Uh, uh, I heard some good advice from one of my friends years ago, and he said to me, any bachelor party you're ever invited to, go. Just go. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> he, he was married at the time. He was like, just okay. go. Okay. No. Can I ask a question twice. here? Um, so the the quality of of fun women out in in all these bachelor parties, you go to Vegas a lot, Austin. Is there a comparison to be made, or is it just all the same? I mean, Vegas is always amazing. But Austin's my this is my third bachelor party in Austin mm. and it was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> this is one was I wasn't I had I didn't have the same expectations I had for Vegas and it just blew my mind. And Austin, I think like Austin, Nashville, Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and I think Miami are like the top bachelor bachelorette party plastities right now and it definitely shows because there were bachelorette parties there and yeah, there was a lot going on. I heard great fun. things about Austin. I Austin's gotta get a great out there. Place. Yeah. I yeah. heard the live indoor outdoor yeah. stuff. The food, the music, food, I've just heard music, amazing yeah. things. Isn't yeah. that where Joe Rogan lives now? It is. Oh, he built that set up thing. shop for yeah. his podcast. He yeah. lives in that tunnel buried in the ground, right? Isn't that what that is? A bunker? <laughs> some kind yeah. Of, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> some kind of doomsday bunker he's podcasting from. All right, well, Anthony, uh gargle some tea. I don't know, hot water. <laughs> but we'll get through this. Let's talk about some geek stuff. The Jock, the Jock and Nerd Podcast. <laughs> Let's start with a video Ryan Reynolds posted on his YouTube channel. Uh, this is a reaction video featuring Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, Taika Waititi as Korg, and they are reacting to the trailer for the movie Free Guy that also stars Ryan Reynolds and Taika Waititi. Oh, shit. And holy shit, this was surprising, hilarious, and is this... Deadpool's first legit appearance in the MCU. Yes, is it? Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of. It's their. 
I don't know if it's like a, a an MCU canon thing, but I don't. Who, I guess it kind of is. But yeah, it's, it's definitely his first interaction with a Marvel like, character. Right? Yeah, Disney had to okay this, right? So that, oh, they yeah. have to. So, and- well, I mean, they're they they own Twentieth Studios or Twentieth Century. So. Well, right, and they own Free Guy that made the movie. Uh, right. Anthony, what did you think of this? Did you find it funny? You know, we talked about how would you handle Deadpool in the MCU if it's PG PG thirteen. He's swearing. They're bleeping it out, and like you said, this is the first time he's interacting with a character from the MCU. Uh, I I loved it. Oh, it was I great. Thought, <laughs> I thought it was great. I think there should be more of Deadpool Korg. If not Deadpool Korg, they should be pairing him up with oddball MCU characters like this and doing reviews and talking about things. I mean, the opening line where he's like, hey, Mr. Paul, sorry you're dead. <laughs> As Korg's line to Deadpool is like, all right, here we go. And they're just riffing back and forth. I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought this is perfect use of Deadpool and, and pretty good use of a character, Korg, who they've kind of made made into something that wasn't really anything in the comics. I'm trying to figure out what would be funnier. Is, is it Deadpool making fun of himself being Ryan Reynolds? Or it would be would it be funnier if someone else was just making fun of Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> like any random person. <laughs> I mean, it helps that it's him, but I like how he's like trying to get into the MCU. He's like, right. you got a Disney Plus show, don't you, you fuck? Uh, some of my favorite lines where he's like, I give it four avocados. And Clark's like, I was raised by avocados. It's so <laughs> funny. And then when, he, when Taika Waititi shows up, he's like, looks like he has four arms. The two of the bottom ones have gloves on them. And he's got his <laughs> legs and his feet up. I heard he's a nice guy. Oh, my God. I want a whole channel of this. I want this weekly, every day. I want him to drop a reaction video of Deadpool. It's fucking hilarious. Rugs, any other co- thoughts? No, I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was cute. Uh, does it make you want to see the movie Free Guy? No. Yes. I, I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. <laughs> no. Anthony, does it make you want to see the movie? No. I mean, I had no interest in the movie and then them just shitting on the movie. <laughs> 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 Makes me more want to see Deadpool and Korg, but not not the movie they're trying to promote there. I'd watch a riff tracks with Deadpool doing it, you know, doing commentary. No, he just yeah. they should just keep making these reaction videos of him trying to get into the MCU. The problem, I guess, not that it's not a problem, but the thing is, they can't do this first. They don't really want to probably do this for things they don't own. Oh, so they're going to have to do this for things they own. Yeah, and they're going to shit point. on the things they own. Yeah, to promote what they're what's coming out. But so, that, I mean, it's self deprecating. It self awareness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's a good point. He wouldn't be able to do this with just anything. I mean, he makes the joke. Of, well, they use Cruella in the beginning too. Right. He's like, "Where's the fucking dogs?" <laughs> After watching the movie. <laughs> well, so I think funny. there was a one where he 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 did this with Cruella. Oh, that was a real one. I think was it? I don't know. I don't. I haven't looked it up, but I thought that was what they were getting at. He's done one already. People liked it, and then he had the dog with him. So then he brought in Korg for this one. I mean, he calls himself Canadian Cumberbitch. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I was raised by avocados. Uh, no, so it didn't make me want to see the movie, and it has the effect of like you know great ad campaigns that you remember commercials, but you can't remember what it was like advertising. Kind of has that. Uh, effect. Do you guys watch reaction videos? I want to talk about re- the reaction videos for a second. You guys watch any reactors? This is a huge, not really a huge not, industry now. Not really. I remember the last time I like memorably watched a reaction video was watching Joe Rogan uh, react to two cups, one girl or two oh, girls, one two cup. girls, one cup. That's right. I think that was the last time I was. I, was, I watched oh, a grandma shit. watch that. I think so that's what started the, the whole trend. Watching. Probably <laughs> he must have. And like in the beginning of this, they nail it. He's like, "What's up, reaction faction? Make sure you smash that subscribe button." It's like, hilarious watching a reaction video to me, or watching someone else play video games like on a stream. Yeah. You don't like you're not doing Is that? it the equivalent of me watching ah, someone else damn. eat a sandwich in front of me? <laughs> I think I'm, that's a YouTube channel also. You can subscribe yeah, to Yeah, just like I want to see people eat different like, sandwiches. If I'm watching somebody play a video game because I want to see how to get past something or that's how to use thing. a weapon, that's yeah. one that's informational. Yeah. When it's just like casual playing. Yeah, like I don't want to watch someone else watching a movie. I'm watching the movie trailer. Like it'd be cool if they gave uh their thoughts, but I don't want to watch it with them. It's weird. I'll admit the only other reaction video I seeked out was people's end game reaction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Um, The four out of five. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Kill me now. (laughs) Like there's ones where like the guy saw the trailer for like Star Wars and he started to cry. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's that. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, get out of here. Well, I think people then saw those and then started 
fake crying for or trying to cry for other stuff. Yeah. It's easy. You just like pull out one of your ball hairs and you start tearing up. It's not hard. Anybody. And then you smell them. Yeah. And then you you make the smelling (laughs) face like something like you just took a shit and you can smell it. So uh, let me shout out our buddy. First of all, Gerald Morris, two peas on the pod. He has started a YouTube channel. He's doing reaction trailer reactions. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) You you fuckers. uh, But it's awkward for you. I'm going to shout out. I mean, I didn't shit on it as hard. No, No, and it's fine. Everybody's doing it. But I want you guys go subscribe to that but the i already been subscribed I, I, to that. yeah no, oh shit and i knew i knew that you would you would put this in the notes and i i just heard hear rug boy shitting on reaction videos and i'm, I'm like, gonna this shit is on gonna everything that's just what i do well look they're not all the same some guys are, are more entertaining than others what i fall into the hole of is music reaction videos there's this one dude no life shack who is reacting to like eminem songs and he's great his reactions are great because the lyrics are there and he breaks it down but my favorite is so there's a lot of young cats, young younger than you, Anthony, like the next generation, making these reaction music videos to classic rock songs, songs everybody has heard, songs that these kids have never heard, right? And mm. I kind of enjoy watching these. My favorite is watching people discover fucking Pearl Jam, right? They'll play Black by Pearl Jam and they'll be like, Oh my God, where did this guy come from? I can't believe his voice. It's so unique. I can't believe he could be so vulnerable. I've never seen people play instruments. Like, it's hilarious. They lose their shit. And I'm like, yeah, this has been around for fucking 30 years, you fuckers. Don't you feel like that it's fake, though? Like, when I, I, I actually got into watching some guys, like, some guy you never heard, like, classic rock before listening yes, to. Some of them, maybe. And I feel like that they're, they really don't like the music at all, but they're just pretending to like it. And you could see that in their face. Like, like, all the, the thumbnails are doing? like, this changed my life, blew my mind. No, 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 I'm sorry. That's not. But there's a lot of people who have never listened to these. And so then I'm like, I want to do reaction music videos, but I'm like, I've listened to everything. This no, is not going to work. Need to do them. You would need reverse? to do them the stuff that's out now. Yeah, I would have to do reverse. But it would all be shitty things, and I would yeah, just like, get angry. I, I would just, yeah, just watch Cardi B videos. Oh God! And just, <laughs> just be slamming my head against the table in the reaction. Video I think that that's time. even dated. Cardi B is oh, already shit. out, right? We're after the, onto some other new lady or something that's shaking. Uh, Cardi B is still pretty popular, but Megan The Stallion, I think, is the hottest. Oh, Megan The Stallion Megan is Stallion everywhere. Is yeah, is the hottest uh, rapper, female. Dua rapper Lipa right is she still a thing? Or they? She's not a rapper. Yeah. That, she's not a rapper. She's not a rapper. Dua Lipa's a singer. Yeah. Her, you're talking about her. She's a, oh, her. a singer. Yeah, yeah. There's her. Not the movie. Yeah. Anyways, I think it's hilarious <laughs> when people are like, oh my God, any better. You're so old. I know. I just think it's funny when they're like, any better. I can't believe somebody could sing like this and they just don't know the history that everybody copied him later in their life. Does anybody like do like what I would do, which is just like if they don't like it, just completely shit on it? And like to, and you know say, what? oh, I've never, this is totally ripping off this other song, and I've this never, is fucking no. dog shit. No, that's a good point. They always love this the song. They're like, this was amazing. I'm so well, glad you because they're you know their viewers suggest them, so they're not going to be like. I was watching this like video of a dude who was t- trying to explain to you how to get followers, uh, especially on YouTube when uh-huh, you're a, uh-huh. a streamer, yeah, or or a YouTube blogger, or whatever. And it's like you have to try to appeal to people's things. So like. You either have to fight a battle that they want to fight or you have to, like, encourage them and make them believe in themselves or make them believe that everything's awesome or whatever. Yeah. So it's just like this it's formulaic way of actually getting followers just to kind of do this, stuff. not to actually really be real, but just to kind of like fake the fuck. just be hopeful and positive or whatever. Yeah. and have that energy. But like sometimes it's sincere and sometimes, yeah, it's a little much. Anyways, listener, let us know what you think about Deadpool in the MCU official. Uh, join our Facebook group. Jock and Nerd Nation, it's called. The links are in the show notes. It's an closed, exclusive group just for you and us and all of the listeners. You can meet them all. They're wonderful. Uh, let's move on to some Emmys talk. They did put out the this year's Emmy nominations. And uh, as far as the stuff we love to watch, all this shit cle- cleaned up. Well, from WandaVision, Mandalorian, The Boys, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, WandaVision got uh, 23... Emmy nominations. Oh, shit. The Mandalorian, I think, had 24 Emmy nominations. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier with five Emmy nominations. Uh, But also other interesting things like Lovecraft Country got a ton of Emmy nominations just after HBO canceled the show, which I thought, yes, was funny. It's not getting a second season. 
Oh, they, so I guess I shouldn't watch. I I watched one episode and was intrigued, and then had it. Caught I back mean, on that's it. the thing. Is like, there's no. It's good, but it's you're not going to get anything after that first season. It's a good first season. I just think it's funny that they canceled it, and then uh, it gets all these nominations. Uh, and then they combined HBO and HBO Max to go against Netflix, and each of them have like 130 fucking Emmy nominations. Anyway, streaming platforms cleaning up here. Do you think these shows are deserving? I mean, I think it's kind of crazy that Disney Plus, first year out, has given us huge Emmy-nominated shows. Let's see if they win. Yeah. I think they're deserving, but I don't know. I don't watch enough TV to really say that they are. Well, so. Th- They'd be dumb to ignore the shows that are like the most popular shows that have come out. Like they're obviously they're in the zeitgeist. People are talking about them. Everyone's been tuning into these shows. So to ignore them, the Emmys would probably, you know, they'd get more people to tune in if they're talking about these shows at least. So there's that, that a very good point because the Oscars this year was, you know, clearly movies that no one's seen and it was the, probably the worst ratings ever. <laughs> so, yeah. You definitely want to, you definitely want to pick things that are still that can draw ratings and draw fans. Well, and the reason yeah, that's a good point. this year has crazy nominations all over the place is because the the two big winners last year are weren't eligible. If you remember last year, uh, Schitt's Creek won like the first seven Emmys in a row, and then Succession on HBO won the rest of the Emmys. So it was kind of dull. Both of those shows not eligible this year. So now you have this crazy. Uh, crazy selection of shows, and I'm glad that you know WandaVision and Falcon and Mandalorian. Mandalorian is up for best drama series, uh, up against The Boys, Bridgerton, The Crown, Lovecraft Country, Pose, The Handmaid's Tale, and This Is Us. Hmm. So, hmm. yeah, and then just outstanding comedy you got Blackish, Cobra Kai, Pen 15, Emily in Paris, Hacks, Ted Lasso. The Flight Attendant, and The Kaminsky Method. Disney Plus had 71 uh, nominations. That's crazy. Total. (laughs) Uh, Okay, uh, now I want to talk about... Ruggs wasn't here, and we talked about the Spider-Man No Way Home suit. Spoilers, Ruggs. Oh, this this one's for Ruggs. This one's for Ruggs, because we have some more. I'm going to hit this for Spider-Man No Way Home. (laughs) Spoiler alert. It's spoiler it's alert. More, that's my rug. That's my rug boy impression with a horse voice. Spoiler alert. It's, uh, it's like a depressed rug boy. With that <laughs> rasp. It's a coked out rug boy. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago when Blake was on rugs, they had Legos and we had a couple of these hot toys pictures from Sideshow. Now I have the whole page here. You could buy this thing. It's two hundred and seventy dollars. But great look at this black and gold suit. We're going to see in Spider-Man No Way Home. And some other interesting details that are, I mean, at this point, this, there's no secret what's happening. We know Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. Rugs, what do you think of this suit, first of all? I don't like it. No? <laughs> no, I don't. But, I mean, I just, the Lame. thing that bothers me the most is that big blue thing on his chest. Well, so the blue stuff is mystical magic shit that uh, Doctor Strange is going to give him because, of course, Spider-Man needs to be a, like a junior somebody. He's not Iron Man. He's going to be a little Doctor Strange assistant oh, now, right? Okay, you that's very gonna, nice. You know they're going to do that. All right, great. Work on that character really uh, development. No, he really can't. Well. He needs help. He can't do anything on his own. We know this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. I mean, <laughs> it, it looks like kind of weird. It just doesn't really... It's a it's a sideshow figure, so I hope that the CG looks a little bit more smooth because it looks kind of like, I don't know, just like ill-formed. But, yeah, the biggest thing that bothers me is that blue thing. Um, it'd be great to have a – he only has red details in the fingers, and I, that's kind of cool sometimes, but – I don't like that. I think, Anthony, you mentioned that last time. I dig the black and gold, but then why is the red there? Just I feel like that they, if you're going to put red there, it's got to be in some other details that we can see. Why not Maybe just a, leave it black or put it a gold? A stripe down the leg or something, you know what I mean? So it's just the balance is off. It, maybe the soles of his feet are, are red. Maybe that'll do it, but it'd be cool to see it somewhere else. So there's like a gauntlet thing that slides over his arm. That's probably something Dr. Strange is going to give him in the movie, but like, I wouldn't buy this. I would, I, I wouldn't be like, I want to buy this figure. This it doesn't, it doesn't scream to me. Like it's cool. Like it's just seems very lazy. In fact, you know, what kind of looks like yeah, what 
kind of looks like uh, Killmonger's Black Panther costume because oh, they had gold black and piping gold. around it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of that. I just feel like that these costumes are super lazy. <laughs> Is this They're thing, just fucking are, lazy. Are these posable figures? This is what I can't understand about these hot toys. No, they are. They're posable. They're like Barbie dolls almost. Oh, so it's like bendable and you don't see the joints and it's like cloth on no. it, which is what yeah, you... Yeah, there's cloth yeah, over okay. it. Yeah. Well, it comes with like 10 different hands and heads and different eyepieces and all this shit. It's yeah. $270. I, I will agree. I, I wouldn't buy this one. I like the, the Spider-Man upgraded suit from the last movie, which is like the black and red. That one's for 250 That suit's tight. I'd buy that one. I don't really like any of these suits. Really? From the new ones. No. From the new stuff. Yeah. No, I actually prefer the old <laughs> Tobey Maguire one to, to all of them. Or even the Andrew Garfield suit is fucking dope, Yeah, or too. the second. The, yeah. he, both of those suits are actually pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I feel like all of those suits, I prefer them over any of the Marvel suits. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. Like the the black doesn't stand out. The webbing doesn't stand out enough to me yeah. in most of those suits. And I feel like that it doesn't flow very well. Like like why would you put these gold bands uh, under the knee? That's stupid. It looks dumb. It's his boots. I mean, I think it's <laughs> in- with the fur. <laughs> with, you gotta have boots with fur. Yeah, everybody does. I think it's interesting to help put the pieces together for where things are going. You know, after Loki, we'll talk about what happens and then. Spider-Man No Way Home is uh, the next, uh, uh, not the next movie, but two movies away yeah. in December. But you can kind of get a hint of the shenanigans that are going to happen. Uh, but yeah, spoilery, whatever. I need something. We'll talk about that trailer. I feel like that trailer, now that this episode of Loki is aired, they could put this trailer out. And we'll discuss why. Perhaps, is, this yeah. is coming up next, right? The, no, no the, it's well, two you've got, movies uh, away. Shang Chi uh, and, and, and Eternals plus like two or three TV shows. A bunch Wait, of, we got yeah, we got what before the Eternals? Well, listen, well, it's Shang Chi, well, no, Shang Chi, Eternals, and then Spider Man. Oh, okay. In terms oh, of no movies and then TV shows, and we'll discuss the list. I think we have three TV shows. Yeah, maybe there's a bunch. What if Hawkeye and perhaps Miss Marvel. Marvel concurrent yeah. to it? Yep. Hmm. And then Shang-Chi, Eternals, Spider-Man, No Way Home. And the only one we haven't had any trailer for is Spider-Man, No Way Home. There was an Eternals thing. There's two Shang-Chi trailers. So we'll discuss when we get to Loki why that's probably the right time. Speaking of the MCU's future, one of the movies coming up that was announced two years ago was Blade. Kevin Feige teased that we are doing Blade two years ago. Well, now it seems like they are in talks to nail down their director and writer. Oh, shit. Uh, unofficially, they're meeting with people, but they are looking at this dude. His name is Bassam Tariq as the top choice to direct Blade, which will be the first Phase 5 movie. He is best known for directing my boy Riz Ahmed. Uh, you know Riz Ahmed. He's my boy. Sure. F- That's your guy. Mogul Mowgli is the movie. I've never heard of this movie or seen this movie. With Riz Ahmed. I can't believe there's a Riz Ahmed movie. I haven't seen. I have to fix that. Uh, and, uh, of course, starring Maharshala Ali. Uh, what do you guys think of, uh, well, I, I don't I don't know if anybody knows Bassam oh, yeah. Tariq. I like that. It's like he's a minority dude, obviously, with the name Bassam Tariq. It's a very, <laughs> so, yay, there. He's great. Is he from Pakistan? I don't know. Let's look him up. We'll spot, let's look. <laughs> uh, Bassam Tariq. I bet we'll he is. We'll see how much you really like him. He is from Karachi. Oh Pakistan. shit! He's, my family's oh, from uh, Karachi. Uh-oh. Oh my god! Imran's gonna jizz all over. This the is place. my brother, Basam Tariq. Wow. Right on. He was born in Karachi. Yeah. Oh, uh, this this so movies. basically short films. This gets better and better. And well, the then movie Mogul Mowgli. You mentioned yeah. it's with uh, Riz Ahmed, yeah, right? Yeah. You, this is something I feel like you should have already seen yeah. seven times. It came out 2020. It's, oh, shit. Oh, listen to this. Mogul Mowgli, because Riz Ahmed is also a rapper. The movie is about a British Pakistani rapper is on the cusp of his first world tour, but is struck down by an illness that threatens to derail his big break. Oh, it's Sound of Metal before Sound of Metal. Oh, right. It's like the same it's movie. It's the exact same movie. It's the same movie, <laughs> only with the, as him as a rapper. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I'm going to, well, I got to see this. He's a good rapper. It does sound kind of intriguing. Yeah. He's like MC Riz or something is his rap name. Uh, but he's apparently a good rapper. Uh, Riz MC. R- oh, Riz MC. I had it backwards. Mm-hmm. Riz MC. Uh, mm-hmm. So at least there's movement. They're looking at a director. I think they got a script. 
they have all the action sequences mapped out already. So yeah, they, don't have they have to, all the CGI say? for the camera movement. It's being written by Stacy Ose Kufour. We'll be writing the screenplay. And hmm. there's your blade, Maharshala Ali. It's coming. I'm I'm glad to see some movement on blade. I'm not gonna fake like excitement over this, but I'll just be like, okay, I'm glad that it's something's happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad something's happening with blade because they 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 announced Maharshala Ali. But they haven't really announced like when the movie's no. coming out, what phase it's in, anything like that. It was just like we have Mahershali, which is great. I like Mahershali. He's great. We heard Mobius say we prune vampires, so now there can be vampires, and now get this movie out. This movie's not coming out till like twenty twenty three or something. Uh, we'll have a long wait. Uh, let's check into the box office. Black Widow has now made over a hundred million dollars domestic. 131 million. It has made 260 million dollars worldwide. The F9 has crossed 600 million dollars. Black Widow hasn't come out in China though yet. Black Widow hasn't secured a release date in China yet, which is mm. troubling. Uh, so it may not make all the money it could make. Uh, but uh, is there a reason? No, I. You know, I don't know. It just says they haven't secured a release date. Ooh. Uh, but the second weekend, here's an interesting detail. We talked about how the first weekend, the movie made $80 million domestic and then 60 million on the Disney plus the second weekend, this past July 16th through 18 weekend, it loses to space jam, which came ahead, uh, made 31 million this weekend Hmm. and it beat black widow. This has the North American theater association, NATO theater owners, Really mad at Disney, and they're blaming the fact that it's on Disney Plus. They asked Disney for updated numbers the second weekend for Disney Plus money, and mm-hmm. Disney refused to update their numbers. So they're sticking with 60 million first weekend Disney Plus. Uh, but they're saying that's what's really, they're really mad at the fucking Disney, and they're, you yeah, know, perhaps. But that's a huge drop. I mean, it's almost a 70% yes, drop, which is, that's which bad. is really bad. That is yeah. bad. Uh, why do you? Why do you think that happened? Do you think they have a reason to be angry at the Disney Plus release? I, I do think. I think anyone that wanted to see it has seen it already, right? Either I like agree. in front of their t- yeah, in front of the TV or at the movie theater. And if you've seen it in the in front of your TV, you can watch it over and over again. So there's you lose the repeat viewers. You're not going to go and pay multiple tickets. Are people going back to see it again? Doesn't but sound. I like. normally see the movie twice, yeah, because I want to watch enjoy it the first time and then actually kind of put a critical i to it the second time for these reviews right. for the didn't only for the marvel movies i don't watch every movie twice i have not watched what was that movie slime or whatever street trash street I didn't watch trash it twice. anyways but with you know disney you could just watch it at home yeah you can watch it at home you can skim through it you could just watch the good parts it's right. great so black widow did make a hundred million dollars in just six days it, the money's getting faster uh f9 took eight days to make a hundred million Quiet Place Part Two took 15 days to make 100 million, so it's interesting. I think that's just because people are coming back to the movies and the box office is returning. So I made it real fast, and then dips second weekend. Are is it right for the theaters to blame Disney Plus rugs? Yeah, obviously, because they. Have, I'm already saying. I already said this. They have another option that they can use. It's this is happening only in the places where Disney Plus is available. Is do they, they do that research? If it's only the or is it people just all right? Everybody who wanted to see it saw it already. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Is, I think is it's that, that is that the draw of Black Widow? Is that what we would have seen in the theater if Disney wasn't around? It was would it drop off? What, what would the drop off be on second weekend? You you know, and you got another another big movie coming out at the same time, and it splits the. We have a small movie going audience as it is. Right now, because of the pandemic, so you're now you're splitting that. So, for for reference, because you mentioned F nine, yeah, and how much is done worldwide. The Mexican or the Chinese market is huge. Yes, I mean they did it, it, two. It's done two hundred and three million in China. That's amazing. That's crazy. And you'd imagine Black Widow would do pretty equal yeah, amount, easily or around you know something in, in the hundreds of millions. Easily that much, and yeah, it would have opened stronger. Also, obviously. Uh, so, but also there isn't outside of, there isn't another day and date release they have. I don't know what they're releasing on Disney plus the movies coming up are going to be all, yeah, they haven't, yeah, Shang-Chi, yeah, I don't think yeah. it's going to be that even in that free guy reaction video, it says only definitely not streaming August 13th. Like 
this I think this uh, this model may not survive because uh, they're getting shit from NATO. <laughs> uh, listener, uh, you want to buy a T-shirt? I got a T-shirt for you. It's got our logo on it. <laughs> Do you want to buy a T-shirt? <laughs> yes. Do you want to be like the cool kids and wear a hip niche T-shirt? People love niche T-shirts. Get a Jock and Nerd podcast T-shirt or other merch at our tea public shop, jockandnerd.com slash shop. There's uh, tote bags and face masks, even though you don't need them anymore, apparently. Uh, there's tank tops, T-shirts, hoodies, sweaters. You, you need them in L.A. County. You, you're, you you're, you're, yeah, you're starting to need them more in uh, lots of places. Uh, again, interesting interesting to note. So they're still there. Get your face masks. You're going to need them. Uh, shop Jock and Nerd, jockandnerd.com slash shop. Okay, let's finish with a couple of DC things since we're it's all Marvel. Uh, uh, we have from coming up August 12th, Titan season three on HBO Max is coming out and they released a full story trailer giving you a lot of little tidbits and it still looks like it's going to be not that great. Lame. Uh, Rugs, let's start with you. What did you think of this uh, death of Jason Todd and all the things we saw? I feel like as a, it's a very truncated version of what happens in the comics it's obviously not going by the kinds. This is kind of an else world. It's too quick. Yeah, it just well, it's just weird because you don't feel like in order for this to work, in order for this whole story to work, you need to have an active Batman. Yeah. All right. You don't have that in Titans. You have <laughs> an old retired Batman with with a Robin that kind of is tangentially doing stuff. And then he becomes the Red Hood, and it ha- maybe they do a time jump or something or whatever. It's just weird. And the reaction that Batman has when uh, Jason Todd dies isn't to quit being Batman and then have Nightwing take over. That's just not what happened. So it's just a very strange, like, you don't, number one, you don't, you don't establish Jason Todd and Batman working together and having that relationship and feel, really feeling that kind of, bond that they have that they're partners and whatever and without that i think the gravity of the story and the fact that i don't think they're going to show the joker i think it's only going to be in a silhouette form yeah i don't gonna- think they're showing the joker you do see people smile x killed but you know the the great thing in the comics was you got to meet jason todd he was a dick you hated him you got to vote whether he lived or died i called in the number i voted him to die and then they killed him, and then years go by, and you forget about him, and then this Red Hood character pops up, and you're like, who the fuck is this guy? And then that reveal is amazing, right? Oh, shit. Here, wh- isn't it obvious? Jason Todd dies, this fucking guy shows up, you guys can't figure this out? Come on. <laughs> Anthony, yeah. what, what did you think? They're showing you, you know, you got Barbara Gordon in the wheelchair, post getting shot by Joker as Commissioner Gordon, Scarecrow is in this, and... Uh, you got lines like "I'm gonna hawk, she's gonna dove" or something. Uh, what'd you think of the <laughs> um, season three trailer? I mean, it's very obviously what you mentioned. It seems very focused on Batman, Robin, Red Hood. Very, you know, focused on that. It seems like all the other titans are getting the shaft, at least according to this trailer. I'm gonna be honest with you, though. I, I'm not gonna watch the yeah. show, but I was not all that disappointed. Oh, I wasn't shit. all that like oh. this is a terrible trailer. Yeah. I was like. This looks okay. I feel like the trailer was good. It got me. Yeah, it got me well interested cut. into it, and the way that they edited the music and everything, it, it was it was kind of cool. But yeah. we've seen the show, so we know what to expect. Yeah, you you watched more than one episode of the show. I've only watched one. I thought the first episode was terrible, but from watching that trailer, again, I'm I'm comparing this to like stuff that I've seen from the Flash sure. and Legends lately, and you know things like that. And I was like, this doesn't look like that. At least, at least this looks kind of like they put some money into this and, and tried. I feel like the the seasons get a little tiny bit better every time and they're figuring it out. Uh, but the, you know, you got Connor Kent uh, who's kind of a fun character. There's a whole Starfire other storyline that they have to deal with also. So there's um there is one thing though. And I said this when I first watched the first episode a while back is I, I don't understand why they're leaning so into like dark stuff with this. Yeah. I know there are dark storylines within DC, but Teen Titans overall is not a. Uh, I just never got the vibe yeah, that we're a darker, right? darker group of people. Like you know, I don't think you need that vibe for this show. 
I think that's their. I think that's like they're trying to make their differentiator with it and follow what's worked in for on screen DC in the past. But I don't think you need to do that for the Titans. There's two safe ways to go about doing any any of these things. It's like number one, you can lean very heavily into darkness, so the the weight of of it being so serious will like will and and violent and edgy will kind of make you not think that there's a bunch of people in spandex right, fighting it'll each other. Come, right it's kind of a band-aid it, yeah it's a or you could just throw comedy at everything ah. it's very hard to walk the line in between right where you have it, the ridiculousness of it but also can embrace uh you know some of this more serious action beats marvel does that or tries to do that very well um but i i don't mind i don't mind the dark stuff i just don't like it when it's over the too far over the edge of what would actually happen. Like, you know, when you have Robin going, fuck Batman, like he wouldn't say that. That's not some other character might say it, but not Robin wouldn't say that. I don't think No, the whole trailer is like moody and dark and, you know, lit like that. But I agree. Tittens is a property that would benefit from a little balance of a little bit of lighthearted humor and family drama. And but this thing is all just one one direction. And like it would be great if like Nightwing was kind of instead of like putting guys heads through windshields and like, you know, yeah, like he was, joked around maybe a little. Yeah. If he was a little bit more, number one, he was one of those guys that didn't like maim people or whatever. or tried to be like this thing that's impossible to be. Yeah. Like to be this hero that that is killing, like hurting the bad guys, but not killing them. And, you know, whatever. It's still thinking about the humanity of wh- where we're beating up. And uh, th- I think that's interesting. But I also think, you know, somebody like Frank Castle that just goes fucks and cracks skulls is fun, too. But yeah. it's just not Robin. That's all. Yeah. It would be nice to see Beast Boy transform into something other than a tiger. I think, oh, I think he's only been a tiger. I thought he could change into, like, different things. Be a T-Rex, it. damn it. I don't get it. But they go, <laughs> we're going to meet Jonathan Crane and Scarecrow. And uh, I'll watch. It's going to suck. Everybody gets new costumes. Everybody gets new stuff. Well, look, here before that, here is a DC movie that's coming out that I think we can all be excited for and I think will be a lot better than Titans and that's Suicide Squad. That comes out August 6th only in the theaters and this may be the first movie that does take me back to the theater now. So, yeah, those theater owners, they do have a point <laughs> because I thought I was going to go for Black Widow and then I did it. But this mm-hmm. one is not streaming. Oh, we're going to need to watch it for the show. I'm going to have to get my fucking ass into the theater. They're, they're not putting it on HBO Max. Huh? Uh, not right away. I don't, it'll maybe like 45 days later. I thought they were doing day and day release for all the HBO Max Oh, wait. Stuff. Maybe they are because it's Warner Brothers. It's Warner Let's, Brothers. I think you might be wrong. Whoa. All right. Well, because I know uh, Space Jam is on uh, HBO Max. Oh, shit. I might be wrong. Is the Suicide Squad coming out? He's never leaving the house, is what it was. And I'm never get getting at. to the movie theaters. You know what? The theater owners got it right. Yes, it, it will be in theaters and on HBO Max August 6th. Oh, shit. God damn it. This is a great future we live in. I love it. Sorry, <laughs> AMC. You're not getting my money again. Uh, and uh, NATO's going to be mad. Yeah. Day and day. I forgot all the Warner Brothers this year. They're coming out day and date. That's exciting. I'm suddenly super excited. Anyways, first, like, uh, social media reactions are out on the Suicide Squad and basically calling it hilarious, gory, unpredictable, and completely insane. Uh, so this one I'm I'm very excited for, and obviously it's going to be better than Titans. Uh, what is your uh, level of anticipation for this, you guys? I feel good about it. You know, it's... The thing is with... With uh, Suicide Squad, you really there's really no characters I give a shit about. So he's got carte blanche; he can do whatever he wants, kind of like he did with Guardians. Like whatever he wants to do should be fine. Like I don't care. Yeah, exactly. We've already had a horrible Harley Quinn movie, so <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was okay. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't great. It was fine. I like that. Um, movie. Yeah, I I know you do, but you like <laughs> everything, so uh, that means nothing. Uh, no, but I mean it was okay. It was okay. So. He can't do worse than that, I don't think. So I think we're we're good. I we're, mean, the original Suicide Squad is so bad, and like it doesn't even matter if it's the same, if it's a reboot, if he's doing it over, if it connects with that movie. I don't, no. I don't fucking care. It doesn't matter. I just want to have a good time. And I think 
We are going to have a We're good not time. watching a Suicide Squad movie. We're watching a James We're Gunn movie. We're watching James Gunn, the Suicide Squad movie. Yes. Yeah, it's just going to be Guardians of the Galaxy, but it without the uh, edit, uh, the censorship of Marvel behind it. Like Marvel's all like, God, you know, it's panties in a bunch about everything. <laughs> so because, they, you know, Marvel, you know, DC's like, okay, we're going to be the fucking the one that shows dicks. I don't know. We're, we're going to show things that that Marvel does. We're going to go in the direction that Marvel doesn't. We're going to have Batman bang Batgirl on top of a building in a movie for some reason. Like they they don't care. They just do oh, crazy shit. shit. So this one, but you got Anthony, this one, you're not go, you are you. Would you go to the theater? Um. I don't know if I'd go to the hmm. theater for this one. I'm definitely going to watch it, and I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not feeling obligated to watch it. I would definitely go to the theater if if I didn't have the option on TV. So we'll we'll see. I probably, but I'm probably going to watch it at home. Yes, <laughs> uh, but I I think it looks good. I think it looks like a James Gunn Suicide Squad film, and I I think I'll probably like it. Um, I don't really get myself too amped up for DC movies because. They just haven't done a very good job of making me get right. s- excited for them, right. and, and I do really enjoy the shared multiple, you know, universe aspect of Marvel, and DC's completely botched that, so that makes me even less invested in some of the stuff. But otherwise, yeah, I'm still gonna watch it. And like I said, it'll probably be good. And John Cena as a peacemaker looks great. Yeah, this one hopefully will be, you know, the, the movies they've been putting out have kind of been getting it better. They're kind of getting back on track. And, and anecdotally, that uh, that trailer came on at my bachelor party, or not my bachelor party, my friend's bachelor party this past weekend, and some of the comments were like, "John, is that John Cena? Is he a superhero? That looks." Amazing! Oh, John Cena is the pole. That's great. People are like John Cena. John was just more like that. You know, he looks so ridiculous with a mask on that they were going. Do you think that, that when actually he, looks kind of funny? When John Cena's in this movie and he kills someone, they're going to play his theme music. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would jump the shark. It would Aww. be a little, little much. Or what if like? Or he just literally just jumps over King Shark right after. <laughs> I feel like he like he lands on a car and the horn just does the. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> And it's like a little callback. Well, the only the only reason they I don't think they could do that is because uh, WWE is with Peacock, which oh, is Universal. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think there might be a little rights thing to doing. God something like that. damn it! I don't want that to happen. I'm trying to find James Gunn. There was a lot of articles, and he was talking about how you know what it was like getting fired by Marvel and getting hired by Disney and he said something like most superhero movies are mostly boring to him right now. Uh, so he wants to shake things up, but there was uh, interesting things. And again, this was, he was offered Superman. He was offered anybody. And he's like, no, I don't want Superman. I want to do the suicide squad again. I want to do Brightburn. Yeah. I want to no. do Priority. I did I did it. It's called Brightburn. I want to do something else. <laughs> but apparently the whole firing thing back in the day didn't go well with him, but he's, he returned. So they probably offered him enough money to like, yeah, money talks. And you just forget how we fucked that up uh, and uh, make us movies. Sure. Sure. I can. So August 6th, uh, get ready to stay at home in your pajamas on HBO max. Watch the suicide squad. Sorry. Theaters. Okay. Let's take a quick break. We're going to play some promos and come back and talk about the Loki season finale. Right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hello, and welcome to the Moving the Needle podcast, where we ask, what moves you? Excellent or bogus? Did anyone do the right thing? Do you mess with the Zohan? With me tonight to discuss do the right thing, Rocky versus Creed, childhood, guilty pleasures, a test of time. You don't mess with a Zohan. Once upon a time in Hollywood. With me tonight is Stephanie. Hello. Roy. Hello. And Heno. Yo. We want to thank you for listening on iTunes. We're also available on Spotify. Just about everywhere you can find podcasts. We are. So come on now. Google Let Play. Let us know. Email us at mtnpodcast at gmail.com or, or on facebook.com slash mtnpod. Twitter and tweet us at mtnpod. There's so many ways to find us. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm Brian. And I'm Heno. We're three friends that talk about mental health, wellness, and our lives. Through articles and tips, we share what has worked for us on our paths overcoming depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, alcoholism, and addiction. Come join us on our journey. You can find us anywhere you listen to your podcast. Just search for The Crazy Life. Remember... 
Wiggle your toes and just keep breathing. Listener, if you enjoy the show, this is a fantastic time to join our fan club. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. Jock and Nerd! You can support the show and ensure that we keep making the show. And for as little as $3 a month, you get access to a bonus RSS feed that has lots of bonus content. The shows come out early. There's instant reactions. There is a sports show sometimes uh, based on the season, uh, but also instant movie reviews and just tons of pre-show banter. Lots of fun stuff. Nobody else gets to hear. Only you. And then if you sign up $5 a month or more, you get Discord benefits. We are doing monthly Discord hangouts with our patrons. A very intimate hangout just with the supporters, the members of the Jock and Nerd fan club. This month, me and Rugs, Anthony will not be here again. We've already discussed this. <laughs> Rugs and I will be. When is it again? Thursday, July 29th. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm definitely 8 on. p.m. Central. Fuck uh, all. Check your Patreon <laughs> posts for details. I already put one out, and then I will remind you a week out and the day before. But this is just for our Patreon members, just for you select few awesome listeners. You get to hang out with us. Uh, and we Rugs, care. Yes, yes, we care. We want to hang out with you. Rugs. We'll, ha- we'll have a beer with you. Yes. Bring a beer, sit down, let's bullshit. Bring a beer, a smoke, whatever you want. I'll have a little bit of everything. I wish I could share it through the screen, but that's illegal. <laughs> and not technically possible. Anyways, jockandnerd.com slash Patreon to give back and get stuff from us. Sign up today. Let's get to this week's review, Loki. It's the finale. We're here. Episode six. This one titled For All Time Always. Here's your spoiler alerts. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Prepare to be spoiled! Wow, that's it. The end of the third Marvel Disney Plus show. Anthony. Yes. How does this thing end? What the fuck happened in the episode six of Loki? Do you want me to just do uh, a plot like a quick plot premise or actually tell everyone what well happened. do a big pl- give it do the usual plot thing and then we'll get into what all, right. all this means and what happened well if we remember from the last episode loki's well loki and sylvie enchanted Eliath, and by doing that they found the gateway to the end of time it looks like a little castle and this episode is basically them in the castle figuring out who the man is behind the curtain yeah, it, it. it was kind of an uh, exposition-heavy episode, and largely eh, it's just the character. I don't, think, I don't agree with that. Explaining everything. Okay. I don't agree with that. Uh, 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 okay, well, give us your opening thoughts in, on how this ended for you. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it because I had we all came in with the expectation that this would be a... A Loki. Of Loki, right. and that he who remains <laughs> wouldn't be a thing, and that... They weren't going to waste a version of Kang for this episode. We had no idea that Jonathan Majors was going to show up. Yeah. And that this would probably be the kickstart, really, to where the direction they're really going with the MCU, which yep. is multiverse madness, Kang potentially, you know, eventually showing up. And I thought it was great. I thought the episode, you know, surprised us. But then you, you know, you mentioned exposition. He is explaining things, but this show is ending on basically a conversation. Yeah, yeah. It's not your typical Marvel big third CGI action fight. Even the last, you know, Captain America Winter Soldier, uh, not Captain Winter Soldier, uh, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier. WandaVision ended that way. Both ended in big fights. This was not at all a fight. This was all just characters sitting in a room talking and acting. I mean, yeah. You had, you know, you had shots of Jonathan Major sitting there and the camera just slowly going in on him. And as he's kind of reacting to what's happening, like the moment when he he the moment when he realizes that he doesn't know what's going to happen yeah, anymore. That's crazy. It's great. Like yeah. he, dude, that, that acting there is awesome. And I love the performances. I didn't expect Jonathan Majors not only to be like that, not only to be in it, but to act the way he was acting. Yeah. So everything was you know when when you scream for marvel trying to not you know be for him like this is exactly what i'm talking about they're not this is something that is kind of from the comics but is also like crazy weird crazy heady it's wild. 
Yeah. You have to think about it a lot. And again, like it's just characters in a room and they're, they're able to, to do all of this by not, by just acting. And I, I, I loved it. I loved, I loved every part of it. I will tell you, I, the minute I saw him, you're hanging on every fucking word he's saying, cause you're like, holy shit, where is this going? What is the explanation? And he gives you the explanation of what really happens. Uh, and he majors was fantastic. This him playing a very, and they did what we kind of predicted. They're going to combine things. They combined. He who remains with a variant of maybe a mortis and mortis also. And Nathaniel Richards, uh, Kang, but a variant of Kang. And I was like, holy shit rugs. What'd you think? Because last week you were like, I'm expecting us to give them to give us Loki. But if they give us Kang, I'll be surprised. I was ecstatic that it wasn't Loki. I was ecstatic that it was Kang. I was ecstatic that it was a, a version of a, Mo, a Mortis yep. that is he who remains. Uh, I like John John Majors as an actor, but I did not like this take uh, at all. Not because, like, I understand what they're trying to do. And he's a guy that's been at the end of time. He's insane. He's a little he's, loopy. He, yeah. But you, like... Like a Robin Williams would have killed this. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. a Robin Williams would have nailed it. And if you can't do it like that, I feel like th- that this was very uneven for me uh, as far as the performance. But I, what he said in in the actual text of what he's saying yeah, yeah. and all the things that all the beats of what is was genius. Yeah. Mm. I just re- I really didn't like the performance. I thought it was it, 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 didn't, it wasn't natural. It didn't feel like it was. It felt like it was a performance. It didn't feel like, oh, I'm really watching a crazy guy. Well, I think uh, we're going to see him play different demeanors. Yeah, no, yeah. obviously, Kang is yeah. the real Kang is going to be a motherfucker. Like they're doing that to have par- like disparity between the two. Right. They, they yeah, want you absolutely. to see this one and then you're going to see this other version or other versions. So but I just think that this one, I, I, I wasn't buying it. I didn't I didn't buy it. So but that doesn't take away from what happens in the episode. I think that the whole idea that they kind of they arrive at this castle and the castle is all you could see it's be it's put together with gold streaks yeah it's all which, fractured, which, su- put which suggests that yeah. it's been it's been destroyed many times yeah. and then you have him appear you know as god or or the or the serpent or whoever with eating with the apple the apple right? where do you get the apple he loves apples well, that was well great. the apple yeah. is people are trying to say it's something from doc doctor strange which i i it's clearly okay. This is like the Garden of Eden. It's the Garden of Eden. Yeah. What's well, the genesis of the of, of the world? And right. It's the lesson. Is all right. So you have uh, Loki, and you have Sylvie, who is made from Loki, like Adam and Eve. Oh okay? shit! Yeah. Now Eve is the one that takes the apple and changes the whole entire way uh, God set up the universe. Oh, all right? that's I like that. So yeah. she's the one that goes and sta- like Loki's the one who, whatever. So it's the woman who decides to. To, to progress into a different and he's into the a new snake realm. with the apple well we don't know exactly what his role is you could say he's the serpent you could say he's God or whatever but it, it's got biblical undertones Absolutely. and I thought that was really nice um so I everything unfolded in, in a way um this circle of time this this kind of like they I, I don't understand how you could be at the end of time I that 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 doesn't make if it's a circle, how could you be at the end? I don't. It doesn't Time have an end. If it's a flat a, disc, so yeah, I well, don't. I think, I think we are all saying that it's been a circle, but I'm not sure if the show has ever well, implied that well, it's a circle. But even in no, but you see the ring that they actually but show you. you is the it ring. a ring? You don't see a complete ring. You just see it kind of swooping or it goes in there. Maybe it is a ring. Hmm. It's a universe. I don't know. They've been saying it's a it's a certain time loop. They say it's a loop. It's a well, loop. Well, you it's see, you know, in the beginning where they do that crazy zoom in, that trippy 2001. Uh, I love that because you heard lines from all the Marvel movies, and then you heard lines from leaders like Nelson Mandela and stuff. Then you they s- did that in Contact. Let me address. Yeah, by they, the way. they did do that in Contact. Actually, good point. Yeah. Oh, kind of uh, like. Let me contact. just address real quick the circle thing. I, I didn't have a problem with it yet because I, this is clear to me that this is the start of the storytelling for maybe a long time yeah. with Marvel. Yeah. So I don't think they necessarily want need to explain it all just yet. Like I think we're gonna. This is obviously unfolding across multiple movies, potentially multiple shows. We we already know that there's going to be a Loki season two, so you don't have to tidy everything up in a bow after six episodes of this Loki. Yeah, and I'm also wondering, 
why Loki is the why is Loki the one? Why is he Neo? Hmm. Like why is he the Loki one meeting with the, the architect? Yeah. yeah, at the oh, end it's here, very Matrix like, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why is is he because as a god of mischief is he supposed to like bring chaos into into whatever? So this guy's got this time organization that's supposed to bring order, and Loki is the persona personification of chaos. Chaos. Yeah. So uh, it's all of that stuff really, really works really well. And I like it. So it's kind of, it's kind of a, a, a cool ending to a show. I did enjoy it. And I think there's a lot, we could talk about, I could talk about this all day. Like there's all these little things that we picked up on, but there's still things that like, I can't get my head around, but that's not, not shocking. Cause I'm an idiot. Well, let's, <laughs> but, uh, let's break down what he actually tells them. You know, he, he, he doesn't really give his name. He says, he who remains is something Miss Minutes calls him. Oh, I love the Miss Minutes jump scare. It was fucking great. I never it was s- actually pretty scared. Everybody. Well, he, he calls himself. He goes, uh, some would call me a ruler, yep. which is the, a reference to the ramen tut part of him. Yep. Right. Yeah. And he goes, some would call me a conqueror. Yeah, like, it is. And he goes, he, I, she, they, she calls me he who remains. And then he says, jerk. He ends it with, and I'm, or some just call me a jerk. Or a jerk. Yeah. So it's great. Uh, you know, you know, you know, he's playing it sly. But here's what he tells them way before the TVA was created. A variant of him, he who remains, lived on Earth in the 31st century and discovered the multiverse. Now, it's great Easter egg. Nathaniel Richards Kang comes from the 31st century in the comics. Uh, the ve- so the, the, the variant he who remains people found each other between multiverses, shared technology, knowledge, but they weren't all nice versions. Some wanted power and to rule which leads to the multiversal war, which is actually what the TVA, you know, Miss Minute said. So that part was true. There was a multiversal war. Uh, the first variant of him, he says he finds Eliath and he weaponizes him to eat timelines and ends. He says he ended the multiversal war and fixed the timeline, created the TVA. You're and, welcome. Then he goes, you're welcome. And <laughs> he puts it to him. Great. This is, he goes, there's the gambit. It's fucking, he is a necessary evil he has some great lines going, you think I'm evil, just wait till you meet my variants. So your choices are order with a dictator or chaos. You take out the dictator, who knows what comes, it's going to be way worse. So your options are kill him and his variants come or take over take the o- Yeah, so basically. Have him but, retire. You, yeah, he he let them come. Yes, he paved because everything. Because he yes. he's tired and he wants to pass it, it on. to them. Yeah. And I interpret. Because I was a little confused about that because, you know, are we, we you know, we were still talking about thinking about is there free will and all that. Yeah. I still think there is free will. Yeah. I think he's just been pruning the like everything that like doesn't happen the way he wants it to go. He's yeah. just been pruning it, pruning it, pruning it. But he's been so impressed, I think, by them two that they made together. Yeah. yeah. And what um what makes remember when they were about to kiss and they had that like huge spike yeah, the Nexus event when they were holding hands. Like, and it was like straight up, like it was going yeah, straight up, yeah. like it was the biggest biggest Nexus event ever. That was that was the case because if those two get together and fall in love, they're going to find Kang or this version of Kang and potentially destroy what he's created. Oh. So that is a that is an, an event that needs immediate pruning. That's why he want he that gets but the he most was attention. willing to risk it because he was tired and he gets to the point he only knows what's going to happen up to a certain point. So he needed to risk at some point, someone to take over. So he, he just chooses them. So he wanted, he, that's what he re, he really wanted them to just say, we'll take over because they're narcissistic needs, and they want does, power. A, he's at the end, but he, there is still, even at the end of time, there's still time to go. There's free will still at that point. Well, yeah, point. At, at, at the point where he doesn't know what's going to happen, that's the time where free will actually occurs. Right, so right, I didn't right. understand this this whole the timing of this. He says and he says he lies. He's like, I know everything that's going to happen. And then it's a great shot. You were just talking about it slowly. He just stops talking. It slowly zooms in and you hear thunder. And he's like, oh, like looking around and he's he like, like picks something up. He's like, and he drops it. it. He's like, we've come to the threshold. Yeah. And he's like, look, I lied. I from here on out. I don't know what's going to happen, but what caused the timeline to start breaking there? They didn't even do anything. And well, because at that point he doesn't know what's going to happen. So he doesn't know what he's supposed to prune. Yeah. And then he's like, he's just letting him, letting them decide his fate. Cause he's like, fuck it. I got, and I love how he's like, either you take over and I retire or you kill me and I'm right back here again. 
He's I'll like somehow make my way back. It's like yeah. reincarnation, baby. And then. So I love it at the end when uh, there's a little fight scene between Loki and Sylvie, and it was kind of lame, whatever, but it was just to get Loki back to the TVA. She plunges the knife in his chest, and he's just like, I'll see you soon, and fucking dies. I was like, oh, oh fuck. That's, Winks at her. Caesar, yeah. that, is not, that is not promising. There's some shit coming, and now they fucked the timeline up in quite badly. There's not even a line anymore at the end. It's well, all just webs. Well, just... Just real quick to back up, the reason they're fighting is Loki right. believes him. He does. He's like, yeah. I'm a liar. Yeah. And, and I, I believe know him. I could tell he's not lying. Yeah. And Sylvie just doesn't isn't able to trust him. And she he had already put into her head, meaning he, meaning the the he who remains yeah. by going, You can't trust this guy. Yeah, he was he was egging them on. So they, they yeah. were, he was already kind of egging them on. And she obviously her entire mission has been to kill yeah. whoever it's taken. So she kills him from her point of view. This is what she's been trying to do for but, who knows how long. Yeah. But she's been like this for so long. Whereas Loki, yeah. which is what a, what I like in now at the end of this show, I really enjoy is we've actually got to see this character really become a different person by the end of the show. He's like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He kind of like evolves a little bit, but he's always just kind of been like. I get he gets beat up. Yeah, he's a punchline, yeah. or he betrays somebody, right. or he dies. Like, right. he's just he's, he's always been kind of like things happen to him. But this ep- this this show really allowed Loki to like evolve into someone Absolutely. else by the end of the show. I mean, he he he's evolved more than the other Loki that we knew, like way past that Loki now. Yeah, it's it's weird because Loki grabs the Tesseract, right? This was and this was it right after uh, the first movie, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. or it, yeah, so yeah, where he was like a complete. First movie, yeah. So he was a complete asshole. He wanted to destroy the Earth or rule the Earth. He fucking got Thanos involved. It got it had an invasion on Earth, whatever. Now he, all of a sudden he really does grow in a in, at a neck neck breaking pace yeah, sure. to a different character. It's it, it's a little fast, but uh, yes, I appreciate the growth. Which and, there is growth. I mean, he, yeah. In the dichotomy is now he has a chance to rule all of time. And he decides not to do it. Yeah. Like you think he'd be he'd jump at that chance. And this is a different Loki. And then the reveal at the end where they leave us off is Sylvia sent him back to the TVA. But this is not the same timeline anymore, people, because Mobius is there. Hunter B-15 is there. They don't even recognize a Loki, which is alarming. And then he goes over and he sees instead of three timekeeper statues, there's a fucking one Jonathan Majors gang statue standing there now. This is a different timeline. That is a. Uh, it looks like a like a clone of the Planet of the Apes, Mark Wahlberg. I, type it totally ending. does look like. Oh, it reminded me of Planet of the Apes. Also, the ending. The, the only. So, I'm going to be that guy that just told uh, Loki, told Rugs that we shouldn't care about this. Yeah. But this was one I cared about because we learned in Endgame that even if you change the whatever, change something in time, that doesn't completely alter the timeline. So unless he got sent back to a different universe. I, him changing that shouldn't have changed the timeline he's a part of. Yeah, they had like the back. They said that Back to the Future doesn't mean anything in right. that. And yeah, yeah, I yeah. think this is a different timeline. Unless it's a di- or it's a different multiverse now, or it's just yeah. gotten so fucked. I don't know. But yeah, I was like, wait a minute, how could that be? But we'll see. I, I'm not gonna harp on. I it too think much. it's a whole. Mm, but see, at first I thought the time had been rewritten, and now this is the TVA that exists with this statue because. They, everything else got erased, but what you well, said does. They said, yeah, Endgame has said you can't rewrite time. So this is a branch. This is one. Of, I mean, and there's branches off branches when you looked at the. Uh, well, display. I just thought of something now. They always they did mention in the beginning, and we don't know how much of the truth this is. This is the TVA exists at a place outside of time. That is also true. That they so in their own maybe thing. things can happen that don't apply to the real timelines. Yes, there, that's, I don't know. That that's probably it. That is true. This is all outside of time and space. So it could what have changed. Thing? One of the things I was thinking about when you guys were talking about pruning and and how they're they're controlling the timeline and they're controlling everything, they could have like put in a way. This is why there's no mutants. They've been pruned, sure, and as they were born, absolutely. they were pruned. And we'll, we we'll talk about the possibilities for the future. But now you could easily have mutants. They're just there the whole time in this one branch over here now. And there's your explanation. I'm, this is one of the reasons. I mean, I don't need these shows to be world changing and all that but when it is world changing and they do it well and and you weren't expecting it i i, I was very impressed this I, is huge 
Well, yeah, yeah. It's not only it's huge for the Mar- but it's it's it is huge for the MCU. We thought it's also like was going to do this. Hu- it's like also just a heady thing to think about. Yeah, yeah. And if you're just a casual, if if you're a casual fan, yes, it's something that you like. You have never like, who the fuck is Jonathan Majors, and what the hell is like, what is he even talking about? What's going on here? Yeah, if you didn't know, if we didn't know that he's already cast for Kang, I'd be like, who the fuck is this fuck guy? Is and then when you see him again, you're gonna be like, holy shit! I did notice there is. You talk about the casual viewers, and it's very interesting because I noticed a bunch of people. These shows are in, inter integral in the MCU now. Especially Especially this fucked everything up. There are people who are like, I don't watch the TV shows. I just watch the movies. Do I need to watch Loki? Is this going to affect things? And if you don't watch this, I think you're going to be very confused if you just watch the movies. No. So that yeah, perhaps you know they're making. I think you get I think, this. I think you, you you probably are right. But the the thing is is as you mentioned earlier. Jonathan Majors is going to be playing all different versions of Kang, yeah. it looks like. Yeah. And he's just going to be a different guy all the time. Here's another complaint I saw. Do you think people will bail the casual view- viewers? Is this getting too heady? When they read about timeline fracture and all this, it sounds like nonsense to them. Uh, it, you know, it used to be kind of grounded. We are going into a cosmic and multiversal phase. I wonder who's going to hang on in, in the casual people. I don't know that that that's a good question. They they definitely are going to need to watch this or at least a video to catch them up. You what, know what I think is it might lose casual fans, but I think you're going to keep the fans that say this is too formulaic. This is they're, yeah. they're retreading old ground. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not yeah. trying anything because this is not formula. This no. is something that they're they're. It, like we've all mentioned, like it's it's something that we're sitting here and we're still trying to wrap our heads around what the, what this means and how it even works and all that stuff. It's a little confusing, but it's also fun to think about. Can I ask a couple of questions? Go, go ahead. All right. So from my understanding, a timeline war happens when somebody like Kang gets Alieth to come in and destroy that timeline. Well, no, that's how he takes care like, of the branching timelines. Yeah, he was able to end the timeline war because so how, he took how, care like, of all the timelines. So I'm just like, what's a timeline war? Like, like is is it just pruning other people's timelines it's, until there's only know, one left? Like I don't, think it's prun- I don't think it's pruning. I think it's going in and basically like opening the door and having castles all around every universe. So he owns all of the stuff. In the beginning, they kind of showed you two universes. It's stacked universes, and all those people are fighting to be the main timeline. Well, I, I interpreted too, like when they when they use those things to erase, yeah, the branches the, oh yeah, the or whatever, reset charges, yeah, the reset charges. They weren't only just taking care of the person that was around. I think they, they those reset charges were taking out that entire timeline and sending it to Eliath. Oh, because they said Eliath can eat timelines. Well, the effect so that of would that, make more sense because that would hmm. make more sense to erase everything that is about to happen rather than just erase a moment person. That caused a I do moment. find it highly unlikely that like all of time has passed and there is and is Dr. Strange and all of these mystical people. We have all of these powers that couldn't do anything to Elias, but Loki, who basically can charm things. Two Lokis have to yes. hold yes. hands yeah. and enchant it. Yes, so it, it is very odd that the the Lokis are able to to get here. Yeah, I found <laughs> I found that like why like, as as when I'm watching it, I'm thinking, wow, this is brilliant, and at the same time, I'm like, why is Loki the one? And I was I'm trying, and I even said to me before because he was the god of mischief and everything. It's I still don't 100 percent buy it. Loki like, is so much bigger than we thought in in this whole thing because he kind of sets off the first phase, also, you know, and they you know his yeah. purpose was to get the team together. And now he's become very important again. See, I thought that the Tesseract or the Infinity Stones would have been a cool way to do that as well, but I guess not because they yeah. don't. They want to get away from that now, right? So it, I just it was just weird. Like if he would have had the I mean, Infinity Stone or something, or or something. It's just it's just that Loki's existed this whole time. It's just weird. So there's I only just find it weird. there's only the two Lokis left at the end of this. Is that right? For I don't now, know. but I mean, if there's if the multiverse is starting again, there's going to be Lokis everywhere. There's going to be all sorts of different it's, versions it's, of characters. It's just crazy at the end where and he sends them and they don't even like Loki was like their biggest guy that they were pruning. And now they don't even recognize. So there's like no Lokis when he returns at all. Well, because Kang, the eventual Kang, right? He, yeah. Would, he would never want to prune a Loki because Loki's 
created him again. Oh, it's like a it's like, it's like a, a Terminator. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah, need yeah. Loki's you need Loki. You need Loki to exist. To King to start this war again. But you also need uh, King a he who remains to clean it up, so that Loki eventually sees a he who remains and creates a king. Oh Jesus! Yeah. So let's let's <laughs> just uh, let, let's just uh, explain this, or you explain this to me. There's more than one timeline going on at the same time here, right? Yes. There's multiple, like, I, I think that somebody explained it. It's like a rope of, like, all, like, strings in a rope. They're all separate, but they all flow together. Yeah. Mm. And then, so there's, that's where all these variants come from, because if there's only one timeline and only one Loki, there's only one Loki. And then, you know, a new, new Loki would be born unless there was other timelines, like, uh, perpendicular, or going right next to them, you know? So... Right? Am I wrong? I don't or have parallel, my head fully par- wrapped around it. Parallel. No, I said perpendicular. It's, perpendicular that's branching is out. not the right word. But parallel. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. So they're all like next to each other, but and they're all part of this loop that's going around, but they're not, they're not, that's how you have multiple Lokis, right? Yeah. Before there would be fractured timelines, they prune that Loki and get rid of that timeline, and then that Loki is in the void. But now. I don't think there was like. I, I interpreted it as, and I might be wrong, is that because time is a you know a circle or a flat disc, even though I didn't, don't I don't really know if it is or not. He's seeing things that are happening, all the possibilities at the same time, and there is times when he's watching it where a version, a Loki, does do something wrong, so he immediately has to prune it, right, right, just to right. keep it on the same to prune that 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 timeline that he's about to create, prune it so that you basically rewind the time and. That that version of Loki gets another attempt to do the right thing. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? So how is he born as a girl or or as a person that's not Loki? He's he's got to be reborn again. Yeah, I don't know, man. Re- right. Reincarnation. <laughs> so yeah, I just I'm just There's trying to get. On. I'm trying to wrap my head head around because like I didn't want to ask this question earlier on because I figured okay well, maybe we'll get some answers at the end and then it'll it'll just work itself out. And yeah. There's still and a lot of things but left hanging. That's the best I can explain it is that there there's multiple timelines going around. They're all they're not touching each other. They're all kind of just independent and they don't they don't intersect, but then they when they branch and create new timelines, that's where the one those are the ones that we're most concerned about, I guess. The, yeah. Well, well the Kangs that 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 are going to start the the multiverse war are being right. going to be born are from common. Those. Do you uh do you guys like I mean, this is kind of from the comics, right? Do you like that they're getting this kind of crazy? I think I like it because of the possibilities of basically everything is fucking canon now. They can write any kind of silly thing and it can work as canon. So I like it because of the potential for Spider-Man No Way Home and the rumors we heard there, all make there's sense. There's only one downside to me is that that makes everything that we've experienced like moot. Well, yeah. If, I mean, if this is always this free will was taken and... Yeah, I yeah so that. like everything that we've experienced is like pretty much meaningless at this. Yeah, point. I, I did think of that too because like, that's a big if, reset. If there's one king and he's been sitting at the end of time and he could literally print out on piece of paper, piece of paper everything that happened, everything. Yeah, then he like yeah, there wasn't any. There's no free will. And the Infinity yeah. Stones are in a drawer. You know, it's like they mean nothing. So it's like you know, a lot of it. Like it does. It you know it subverts everything that you've seen before. A little bit, I guess. Yeah. What do you guys? They didn't think? need to do that. I don't think they could have done this. Tell the same story without doing that, but or told a similar story that 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 didn't do that. I got two questions. What do you guys think of? First off, do you think Kang is basically Thanos, where he's like the overarching villain of this yes. next two or three phases, or do you think he's just the next villain for the next Avengers movie? Oh, because, you know, we, we all thought, oh, Ultron, he's a big thing. Obviously, he didn't get as big of a intro as this as this. But, you know, he was just a villain in one movie. And then I think done. it's going to be Ravana and and Kang will hook up. Yeah, well, because they're going to she's going to become the Terminatrix. Or I hope they don't call her that. But oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> a terrible name. But she does become a badass and like, you know, whatever. So um, doesn't she? I think she pretends to be a Kang at a certain point too, like a, a female, female Kang. Kang. Yeah. No, I think they're setting up the next big bad, similar to how you had the Thanos post credit scenes leading up to his thing. This is uh, it's a more organic way of setting up the next big bad. When we look ahead, like the next Avengers movie is not going to be for like another three, four years. So 
there is a yeah, perhaps you know there is a theory it remains to be seen what happens in in doctor strange multiverse of madness i forget who said this was it campia someone was like someone's theory is the doctor strange movie is going to be the movie where he fixes all the timelines and it goes back to what and it may only last mm. until then well, we'll see I, the other question maybe not more more of a question but just some more of a thought is um, if he is like a bigger overarching villain similar to Thanos, I already do like the way they're going about it because Thanos was kind of until Infinity War, we just didn't really know him. He would just show up right. at the end of stuff and yep. be like, uh, 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 "I'm purple, yeah. and I'm going to do something <laughs> yeah. eventually." And but this one, we've like we've already seen. I'd I'd like, and we know that Jonathan Majors is showing up in Quantum Mania. Yep. Who knows what else he's showing up yeah. in because we didn't know he was going to be in this. Oh. Like I like the idea of a villain that was is like a presence that you could, he's constantly fucking with things and different versions of him are around and you know like I think this is a a, a different way to approach it rather than we're teasing him we're teasing yeah. him this is like this is a better he's way. around I like he's this. been around yeah. he's always gonna be around type so thing. Quantum Mania doesn't come out till February 2023 so. Whether he makes a full appearance before then, I love though how they're already he's bathed in like purple and green and blue lights and the purple is everywhere. Well, I don't think we'll see. I don't think we need to see Kang until then. But if we see other versions of Kang, a Ram and Tut, uh, a Mortis, oh uh, yeah, other variants whatever, of him are uh, fucking with things. We're, we're going to keep getting different, and you know maybe it, each variant is like slightly worse, but not the Kang we eventually need Jesus. to fucking be deal with. Dude, we're going to have variants. It's just like, it just makes it the concept of like a villain that you could never like Thanos. You could kill. Right. Right. But the idea of a villain that even as John, the major's character at the end, like I'll see you again. Yeah, like he'll just you will do it never, again. ever yeah. get rid of him. He always will. Like he is destined to always do something in, to fuck with you. I think is, is an intriguing idea and something that could be very scary. Time traveling conqueror is bad news. And maybe even this is where the fantastic four come and, out. And, of. One more thing, and I never when I watched like stuff in the past about Kang, I always I was like, like I found him kind of silly. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like, like, oh, this yeah. fucking man yeah. that's like traveling back in time yeah. and like wearing a purple mask and shit. Yeah. I'm like, this is silly, but they've already I think done a very good job of making him not silly. Yeah, we'll see if he has you that purple helmet. You can't do the Terminator, and you can't go back in time and kill him as he discovers right. the timeline because it's that timeline is always going to exist where he discovers it. Mm-hmm. Oh my so god, you, you can't, can't stop him. You no, you can't stop him. It's always gonna happen. That's why he can be reborn. Yeah. Uh here's one thing I did appreciate. They explain the fucking pen. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> and the Ravona Renslayer storyline kind of petered out towards the end. But that's one of the things I didn't like. I yeah. didn't like the Ravona stuff. I didn't find her intriguing so at all. She so now I'm pretty sure she is on the side of I don't know if she knew he who remains, but she wants to protect the TVA and the people who run the TVA, uh, the pen is from Hunter B-15 is now aw- wokening other hunters, taking them to an, uh, the timeline where Ravona Renslayer is a principal in 2018 in Omaha or something. And that's not even Roosevelt High School, but that's where the pens came from. So that's interesting. But then all of that gets erased because he gets sent back for a season two in a whole different fucking TVA timeline. So who is running this TVA? Is it going to be another Ravona? Is it the same Ravona who now comes over here? Can now she knows more shit. She's got more directions from. I think I think Ravona is like in with the actual Kang, the Kang, the bad guy, big bad yeah, Kang. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. I well, there's so there's a little too. hint too where she had asked for all the files and then. Yeah. At the time, whatever that little time. Miss thing, Minutes gave her Ms. something Minutes else. Yeah. And she's like, he thinks you'll. Based something along the line, he thinks this will be better. We for don't know what she like read. That. Yeah, they never. Right. Uh, and Mobius is about to prune her, and she just knocks him down, and she doesn't prune him again. But then she's out. Yeah. So that whole storyline was whatever. Uh, okay. The as far as other yeah, there's the Easter eggs we went over largely most of them. Let's. I got a couple other criticisms okay. just of overall yes. of the show. I, I I always brought this up. I thought the fight scenes weren't great. Yes. Um, they didn't really need them. I thought the CGI at times, although in this episode, I thought it was very good. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's because they actually kind of built some of that set. But at times, I thought it wasn't the best. Um, and Imran, you would always question if this was a, there was a love story there. They Obviously, kissed. it was. Yeah, but it was an awkward kiss. But, but, it's very uh, awkward. <laughs> I do think that they kind of... 
I don't know if they had the best chemistry no, as far just, as lovers. That's why I didn't buy it. It just even the kiss seems awkward. But the kiss was only so she could distract him for a second and shove him through the fucking portal. So it wasn't even earned or real. I don't know. Maybe. My biggest problem with the series is number one, I feel like Loki was depowered for dramatic purposes yeah. so they could at the end he could be powerful. Yeah. Uh Depowered and, and then overly and then powered overpowered. because he yeah, could get to the was, end of time. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, you know, like in the the thing right before this show, like he was the biggest badass trying to kill everybody and rule Earth, and then he just becomes a nice guy. But like, so I felt that was a little bit of an awkward shift. But um, I think the biggest thing that bothers me is like, yeah, like everything that we've experienced is we don't like even the Infinity Stones, all that stuff is kind of moot. And it, even though and and. I know why they did it. I just was not like happy that they, I don't think they had to do it, but those are my only criticisms other than me, what Anthony said. Some of the fight scenes were kind of weak and some of the CGI wasn't the greatest, but I did enjoy uh, a, a lot of the design of yeah, stuff. It just yeah. maybe didn't look so great, uh, that, but it was designed well. The window behind him, you know, with the swirl pattern is, is fantastic. The, Everything in that castle, I thought, was great. filmed yeah. very well. Yeah. Yeah, and there's fun there's fun details. Like if you notice when they enter, there's statues, there's three timekeeper statues, but there's a fourth statue that's been smashed and it's on the ground. I don't know what happened there. So there's lots of little little Easter eggs and things. I was I, I like disappointed that there was no uh Mobius on a jet ski. He didn't get his jet ski <laughs> moment. Well, at season two. Yeah, so okay, you we'll wait for that. Perhaps we'll get it. I did really like there was a couple lines. The the one one of the other ones I liked though is when he just you know, she's talking about killing, you know, you're killing innocent people or whatever Sylvie is or Loki. One of the two is saying you, you kill innocent timelines and Sylvie's, you know, saying you never gave us a chance or something yeah. like that. And he just yells, grow yeah, up. I love that. Yeah. Grow up. Like we, you are all, you, we've all done evil yes. things. We're all bad people, but it's necessary. And I, I always like when, uh, when, first off, I like when he, villains think they're the hero in their own story. And I like um, just the moral argument at the end of uh, doing it for the betterment of, you know, kill one to save a thousand type thing. Yeah, that was great. They all have done horrible things. I mean, think about all the shit this Loki has done. He's killed lots of people. And actually, I mean, he's not even killing. He's doing the opposite. He's killing a thousand to save one. Oh, that's right. He still thinks he's right. That's right. Yeah. No, because he's pruning entire timelines. Yes. Whole existence is just wiped. Uh, yeah, that's good shit. It's so heady, but it is like, I love thinking about it. It's fucking crazy. And thinking about what this means for the future of the MCU, uh, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I feel like now they can release yeah. the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Like, it makes more sense uh, to release this wacky thing with all these different versions have with this out but i think they need time for people to like watch this and for to process that everything is canon and the timeline's fucked uh this is clearly tying into spider-man and doctor strange too and i don't know if it'll affect eternal maybe this is what raises the flag for the eternals that yeah, all perhaps. the timelines broke that everything's broken yeah i mean everything this this has huge implications as you mentioned they can do everything now they can Rugs mentioned the the X Men thing they can do, but how whatever. like that? But yes, yes you can. But how do you do it? In this is the problem with this again. All right, so you have an established timeline. You can't change that timeline according to the rules that they've talked about. That's true. So how does this affect Spider Man's timeline or whatever? It has something has to happen in maybe in the quantum realm. I don't know how. It, the whole idea is that he's pruning these people because he doesn't want them to exist because they're a threat to his 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 existence right so right. he's pruning them all these timelines are existing in parallel to each other you can't really change the actual current timeline it just continues no but right? dr strange will show up and things from other timelines are gonna start showing up in our timeline something has to happen where it'll allow time these parallel lines to smash into yeah, each other por- yeah portals are opening or they just get yeah, dropped perhaps, yeah the, perhaps there's some the, these doors open up occasionally or is it like mystical portals how much of it is magic how much of it is science this is largely so science think, yeah i don't think the timelines themselves will change i think that maybe you can have people come in through other times so lines. when we meet america chavez her skill her power is she can jump travel through different 
universes and, and timelines and multiverses. You can, you know, travel through the multiverse. So that's going to be important moving forward, having oh, that definitely. power. Uh, before, should we rate it and rank it? Uh, rank yeah. it with what? Uh, the, against the other three shows, the other two shows. But then I did want to talk about kind of the problem. If these shows have problems, what is the problem with the MCU shows? I have a couple of nitpicks, but let's talk about the problem before we, we sum it up. Okay. Do you think these shows have a, a, a inherent blare, glaring problem to you guys? Well, I, I, I'm happy that this show actually had an impact on the universe. Yes. So I think that they solved one of the problems. Which is that was one of the problems I had, but yeah, there's there are these uh, the way that the shows themselves work is a little spotty. So the, to me, a TV show every episode has a beginning, middle, end, and the whole thing has a beginning, middle, end. Are they treating these shows more like bridges where they don't have to actually have an end or a third act, or they just I you know I I think. Some of the shows did it better than other shows. If you look at the whole thing, uh, but some of this was it was a little uneven and just like it di it didn't feel like a complete well, show. Loki, Loki feels like it's going to continue into another season. And I feel like that was a last minute thing too that they decided late in the game that we're giving it a second season because WandaVision limited series Falcon and Winter Soldier they have not announced season two or what they're doing. It's yeah, they, they said I feel like that move that's continuing into Captain America. Okay, 4. so then this one it's interesting that they're like Loki season two, but we're gonna see Loki in Doctor Strange. That's been confirmed. So stuff is gonna happen to Loki and the multiverse between whenever that second season comes out. It may be a whole different thing. Uh, Anthony, do you have a problem with the the shows in general? Anything? I mean, yeah, there's criticisms. I mean, I don't feel like they've hit a home run completely with every show, like where everything has been clicks firing on all cylinders to your criticism. I, you know, I, I think this show probably would have done. You would have probably liked it better if you just binged it rather yes. than watched it. Week, yeah. Weekly. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these work better as but a binge. I also think that they're, you know, they're trying a lot of different things. Yeah. I think WandaVision was a, a bit of an experiment up until the end. Falcon and Winter Soldier. There were some elements of that that were good and some that were, were not so great. And then this one I think was you know, like a, a good show overall. And then had a, an ending that just kind of blew my mind. And I was like, Oh, that was fucking amazing. So like maybe if they can obviously nail all three at the same time, that'd be great. That would be great. I think they're, they're trying things and I think they're, you know, I think they're in, in, in a lot of ways they're successful. So did this show stick the landing for you guys? As they say, I, I think this was the best ending of the oh, three. Oh snap! Okay, oh, yeah. Shit. I don't think it's perfect because I have so many questions, but it's okay because I know that there's another season coming. So I'm right. like, that really helps. If this was to stand alone, I would, you know, because like even at, even at the end of the Matrix Revolutions, I was like, okay, there's another Matrix movie. So I, I'm, it's good. It's That's gonna, what this kind of felt like. It was uh, half of a thing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, there's the other half coming. It's fine. It's like the Empire Strikes Back. It doesn't end with a big explosion and everybody's happy. It's like, all right, now we got to fuck what's next. So um, that's, it's good because it has, gives me anticipation for the next season. But it does do what the other two shows didn't do. And it moves Marvel forward. Yeah. It moves things it starts putting things in motion that are going to have hopefully big effects in other movies and it it does do that thing where it feels like a universe a universe of films that are all tied together and woven together and and if if this thing is wrapped up like in one movie then that's okay too but like it's cool that they could do that yeah this one has the most impact uh moving forward uh yeah, I just wish it was a little more like episodic -y and uh yeah. that's all. Not just a bridge. I I'm just happy that there was a king at the end of this. That was that was crazy. That was crazy. And again, this was, I said it last time. I was like, it's, if it's a fucking Loki, I'm gonna be like, oh whatever. It's a Loki show. It's, of course it's about Loki. But no, they threw a little curveball in there. They're like, no, fuck you, it's gonna be Kang. Yeah, no, the show gets and a lot I was of like, points yes, for this. You did it. Yeah, for this move at the end. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. We I we all predicted because it means something if it's can, yeah. yep. you know, if, it, if it's just Loki, then it doesn't mean anything. So that's a good point. Yeah, that was crazy. All right. Uh, OK, let's uh, let's rate the whole season and uh, rank it amongst uh, WandaVision Falcon Winter Soldier 
Wh- which order does it go for you, Anthony? I'm going to go with a 8 out of 10. Okay. I enjoyed the show for the most part. I wasn't blown away again up until the very end where I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that think it was going to go this way. I didn't think it would. I didn't think the the story would be executed in that way where there wasn't a big fight or anything. So overall, where would I rank it? I rank it slightly behind WandaVision just because I enjoyed WandaVision a little bit more week to week. But it's I could be I could watch this show again. Maybe I could binge it and I might even put it ahead of WandaVision. At some oh, point. OK. OK. Interesting. OK. And uh, fatwas at the end. Yes. Yes. Fat, fatwas. At the end. Fatwas. Rugs, uh, where does this work out for you? I feel like this show was good um, all the way through. Uh, there was some episodes that were really fillery. And it were just like uh, Easter egg dumps, which were kind of like a little bit lame in hindsight. Yes, uh, they did that a lot because they did really they like that the whole the frog th- that means nothing in the in the grand scheme of things, right? Where as soon as we get to Kang and that there's a fucking time war and that shit's like all of that stuff had no bearing on anything. They were really just was, having fun. Yeah. So there are there is times where like oh they fucking wasted a half hour of my life to give me Easter eggs that so don't really mean anything, and after the show it won't matter. Other than that, the fact that they did deliver Kang, they delivered something that could actually help the, the Marvel Universe that has been fractured from the get go from, you know, all of the properties being at Fox and stuff. This is an opportunity. I see in the horizon that there's that we can have a unified Marvel Universe, you know, and it'll be like. The, the possibilities will be endless. That got me really excited. I'm going to say 7.5. Okay. Um, in the order, I think I like this the most oh. because it does that. Yeah. WandaVision could have done this, mm-hmm. but did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, and they fucking dropped all of these clues, blah, 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 this and that. And they didn't really, they didn't have the the stuff to, they wanted it to be, the, but the thing is they wanted it to be so much about Wanda and they got kind of, caught up in that, that they couldn't say, oh, there's a bigger picture here that we're trying to do. And this one, I was like, oh, this, this is if this is all like all Loki central, it's going to end up like WandaVision. It's going to be in that same impact. So it, it went that fir- step further than Wanda. So I, I put this uh, and I think WandaVision and Captain America or, or Falcon Winter Soldier are tied for me oh, pretty much. Okay. Okay, I will give it. So no, I love I love the show. I thought it started really strong. Love the first two episodes. It ends strong. Yeah, there are things like you know the lamentous episode. There are in the, they never they're on the same place. Like they don't go anywhere, and it's just one location, whatever. Uh, but what like what you guys said, what they did at the end to actually impact and give us fucking Kang was wild. I will also give it an eight out of ten, uh, and I will put it just like Anthony. Just under WandaVision. WandaVision was just kind of really special for multiple reasons. Of course, I love television sitcoms and the love and the the, the, the detail they took. And I, as much as this one that kind of ended on a cliffhanger, it did bring Kang and move things forward. I liked WandaVision because it was a story about Wanda's trauma. And it kind of ends... It kind of ends the way a TV show should. The thing gets resolved. She's on her own again. It's like the old fucking Incredible Hulk show where he has to, he's back on the road all by himself. So at least there was closure for Wanda. And then somebody else had a theory, which is now looking back, that post credit scene in WandaVision where she hears her kids' voices while she's in the astral plane. Could that simultaneously be happening when this timeline fractures, right? Because this timeline fractures and now she's hearing her kids, sure, yeah, you know, there's actually. fun stuff like that. So I just love that end of WandaVision because you've felt so bad for her that she fucking had to sacrifice this. And now she's alone. And uh, but Tom Hiddleston, fucking Owen Wilson, they're all they were great. I love Jonathan Majors and Loki is important, but Wanda is also important. So, yeah, let, let me say something overall, though, yeah. positive, too, yeah. about the shows is. First off, I think they do a, a very good job of elite, uh, diving into characters and giving the characters that we haven't gotten, obviously, you know, which which was the intent, the, the chance to shine and get some development when they haven't in the movies because they were either sidekicks or villains in this, in this case. So that's number one why I really like. Number two, I do think that they are trying and going for things in these TV shows, and I hope that this kind of, like, ambition and... Um, 
yeah, just ambition and and willing to go after it and try something new eventually carries over to the movies. Rugs had mentioned earlier that they have all the movies kind of framed out, and it seems like because they've decided to make these TV shows and this probably this wasn't part of Fahey's plan. It seems like they have a little bit more freedom to try things in these, and I think we're seeing that in the TV shows much more so than the latest offering, which was Black Widow. Well, I, you know, and now that Black Widow, you can't, you can't, they, you know, they're not. It doesn't. It's, they're obviously not mapping out CGI fights for for this. Judging by the Loki fights that we saw, <laughs> no, I hope they did. <laughs> they're it. going old school. I think, I think a lot of this is being written, you know, as we speak, and and they're trying to fit it in, and and they're getting. I think they have a little bit more creative freedom. It's also nice that they're using the comics a lot, and even like not the ones that you that we yeah real obscure are very shit. popular. Yeah. yeah, they're they're using like these storylines that probably were cool back in the day that kind of lost like fuck he lost who in the remains shuffle. we were talking about like this shit is so obscure nobody's gonna know this there's no way and then they fucking do it and it's great it, it makes a lot of sense it's good for them to do that it shows that there there is a, a a care for like the old stuff there is a care for some of that old stuff they want to pay homage to it they just don't care I, about I, spider-man no to they don't <laughs> no. that's because of so well, I, as i said in well i think in in with Spider-Man, it's their flagship character, and they want, as I said, they want as many people to love Spider-Man as possible. And it, it is a lazy thing to do. <laughs> but when it comes to this, you know, it's a TV show. It's not in Fai's, like, you know, master plan, or maybe they incorporated it kind of into the game when they went, were going in this direction, and now it's, I think it's nice that they are going, yeah, we're going to use the comics, and instead of just do whatever they want. There's still so much stuff they can pull from is the thing. There's just so much comics to, to play with. Yeah. Use the old one. Not, yeah, not the new stuff. (laughs) Uh, So apparently for season two, the uh, director, Kate Heron, she will not be returning for the second season. She did every episode Uh, and they may even get another writer, but, We'll see how Get long. Get someone who can shoot action. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. Or don't put fucking action in a show that doesn't need the action because they're gods. Yeah. Uh, and then we said Tom Hiddleston will be returning in Doctor Strange 2. And apparently Kevin Feige just had a meeting with Marvel oh, he's Studios. he's in Doctor Strange 2, huh? Yes. So we'll oh. see him there. Kevin Feige had a meeting discussing the rules of the multiverse company-wide. So everybody's on the same page. So that's good to hear because that can get fucking messy. If you don't have a plan now, speaking of the plan, you guys, here is everything that's coming out in the next two years in order. Let me know what you're excited for and what is the plan? Can you see a plan? We have what if coming out in August television show, Disney plus Shang-Chi legend of the 10 rings movie, September 3rd, followed by eternals, November 5th movie, then Spider-Man no way home. December 17th, 2021. Now, between through those, we will have a Hawkeye TV show and a Miss Marvel TV show. They don't have release dates yet. Then the next year, the first movie, March, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, where Loki will be back. Will this be the end of the multiverse? Who knows? Then we got Thor, Love and Thunder, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, The Marvels. Then there's the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special on Disney+. Plus. Nobody cares. She-Hulk TV show, Moon Knight TV show, Secret Invasion TV show. Let's not forget there's also Skrulls out there. There's fucking variants, and there's Skrulls. And then 2023 kicks off with Ant-Man and the Wasp 3, Quantumania, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and then Fantastic Four, Ironheart Disney Plus series, Blade movie, Armor Wars Disney Plus series, and Untitled Wakanda series. There's also a Okoye spinoff possibly in the works. Uh, but that's where this is going. It is a it is a wild bunch of properties we are looking at here for the next two years. Rugs, where does your what what are you most uh, excited for? And Geek Boner. What's like not exciting? Floppy jock. None of this is really exciting oh, no. me at all. Oh shit. To be honest with you, um uh, nothing's really like, oh, I can't wait. Like, Shang Chi, I have some curiosity about. Okay, obviously, because it's a new character, it's a new origin story. Great. Uh, 
Multiverse of Madness. I'm into. I want to see how that how that unfolds. That's a horror movie, and it's gonna have yeah. Wanda and Sam everybody. Raimi. Yeah, yeah, Sam Raimi. Yeah, Sam Raimi. I'm kind of excited. Thor. I I'm a little bit iffy about, but it's Thor's been enjoyable at least. They figured him out. Taika Waititi figured him out finally. Yeah, it's Taika. They're back together. It should be at least an enjoyable film. And now that uh, this Kang thing is uh, Quantum Mania is now kind of coming to the surface as something I might be interested. In. Moon Knight uh, might be interested in. But everything else is just kind of like, man, to me. <laughs> Anthony, how do you feel about this uh, next phase? If this is a phase, I guess. Um, I'm actually pretty excited. Nice. I'm not like I wouldn't pick like if I had to pick, I'd pick a couple things. But overall, I am excited just because a lot of it is either new characters or kind of strange storylines or yeah. like uh, intriguing pairings of things. Um, so I am actually excited for all of it. More so now because of the ending to this of, yes. of Loki. Um, yes. I would say if you would have asked me a week ago after watching Black Widow, I would have gone, ah, like, it seems like Marvel's is not really swinging yeah, for the yeah, fences yeah. on a lot of this stuff. But the the it's really because of the ending to this that I'm now like, okay, let's let's see what they have in store. Let's yeah. see what's going to go, what's going to happen. I agree. Make, an ending like that makes you go, okay, what does that mean for the rest of this? Yep, you're like, oh, they, we're doing this now. Okay. Right. Uh, you know, and there's exciting things of all of these projects. The Marvels, even the Marvels, because now we have Photon and Miss Marvel, right? That's going to be interesting. She-Hulk rumors that, uh, uh, what's his name, is going to play Matt Murdock. Charlie Cox is coming back from Daredevil. We might see him and Hulk's son. Oscar Isaac as a Moon Knight. Skrulls and Secret Invasion. Uh, all of this stuff. And then, like, Black Panther should be interesting to see what they do with that. So... And then Hawkeye has got um, Echo and Kate Bishop. Everything has a little bit of something that that gives me geek boner. Geek boner. At the moment, how it all plays together, which things connect. Like, will there be any multiversal stuff in Shang-Chi or the Eternals? Or did they just ignore it? All that shit happened. And, you you know, you just follow along with the movie. All these things are going to be so interesting to see moving forward. Are they? I, no, no. <laughs> Armor Wars with Don Cheadle. By the way, Don Cheadle got an Emmy nomination for guest star for like he was in there. He was in there for like a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And he gets an Emmy nomination. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for him. Rugs, what was the thing in the notes that you were like, I can't believe you wrote this? Oh, you wrote that the performance from John Majors is great. I, I, I did it. not agree with that. I let, I was like, oh, that was not. I did not uh, agree with that. I, I I liked it a lot as well, but I, I could see why. I think I mean it was one of those where he he swung for the fences and a little over the you top. Like it or yeah. not? Yeah. I just I I just didn't believe it. I felt like it was. I felt like I was watching somebody doing act, trying to act, you know, <laughs> and not someone be the character. You know, I was just felt like it was. It didn't really ring true to me. I mean, I see. I can see how he was kind of searching for the character in the performance a little bit, maybe. Yeah, but I just thought it was fun and weird. Like when you see when you see Robert Downey Jr. and he becomes Sherlock Holmes, he's completely different than he is as Tony Stark. But they, I, they, I buy both of them. You know, they they're completely different characters, but I buy both of them. It's a good point. So it's just I, I didn't buy this character. He's a I good actor. So well, I've only seen Jonathan Majors in very serious stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with yeah. the Five Bloods and, yeah. and Lovecraft Country. So I was I was just like, whoa. What? Yeah. There was also this thing I couldn't figure out if he was doing an accent or not. Uh, does he does he have a British accent? Does no. he? Does he not? I I, I couldn't figure Is it he out. English? I, I don't know. No, I didn't catch an accent. But yeah, I had an issue with that too. So I, I found it to be very. Very I think he's got some range that he will display. No, oh, he's American. Oh, he's a good actor. Yeah. But just this might not everyone can nail like, you know, everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a big it was a big role. It was a big role and it was a big appearance that surprised everyone. But uh, no, I dug it. All right. Wow. Good stuff. Uh, the next show will be uh, What If in August. And uh, we'll talk about that, too. Every episode now. Let's do some news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. Is that the key of C sharp? Was that C sharp? I think that was C sharp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. C sharp over B flat. I'm freestyling. <laughs> 
It's great hip hop. Uh, here's uh, comments from our listeners from our Facebook group about the finale of Loki. Daryl K simply says, wow. Uh, Roberto Rivera says that was really cool. Definitely gave me a good rush to see the timelines going out of control. Dylan McCandless says, I was so happy. I mean, we all guess Kang, but after the Mephisto debacle, I didn't want to get my hopes up, but they just went ahead and did the damn thing. Then icing on the cake confirmation of a second season. Uh, Blake Braden agreed with me and Anthony. He said, I thought Jonathan Majors was good. It was interesting to see the spectrum of emotions Majors portrayed as this Kang. I'm really excited to see the complete villainous, even crazier Kang, the actual conqueror. Uh, he says, other than Majors and the Sylvie Swerve or pushing Loki through the portal, I thought this was just a very basic episode. The payoff to me was lacking a bit, but now with the spoiler of a second season, it makes sense why some questions were unanswered. John Bellotti Jr., our intrepid admin, nerd. says it was easily the most important episode of all three Marvel shows by far and the one that I felt served the greater MCU than the others. Oh, shit. It gets the Bellotti seal of approval, guys. That's huge. Nice. That's big. Matthew Lawrence, uh, great comment. He just says, I'm so confused. And I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people left confused. What? Jeff Chapman says, love this episode. The episode really sets the tone for phase four. Great writing. Explained everything I needed to know. Jonathan Majors will do this character justice. See you soon. So I think everybody overall dug it or was just confused and was like, okay, I guess we're doing this now. This is the thing. Let's finish up with uh, some what are we watching? Anthony was in Austin all week. He was watching people dance. Maybe. Huh. Yeah. In person. I, did wa I do watch on YouTube. I've, I've was into this guy a while back and I'm kind of back into him is he's unfortunately he passed away this year, but his name, his handle, I believe is Lao Shu five Oh five zero zero. And he is basically this black man that goes out and can speak like 30 different languages. Oh, and, and he just, just goes surprises out and talks people. To people. Yeah. And they just are so surprised. That's that amazing. Start talking to them. And I just watch, I've watched his videos. I've been watching his videos every free chance I get. He passed away so though. Intriguing. He unfortunately passed away this year. I didn't know that either. Wow. But, uh, I, I, so his name's Moses McCormick. Moses his nickname McCormick. is Lao Shu, which is in, in Mandarin mouse, because Moses, his name's Moses, and people would think when you introduce himself to Chinese people, they'd hear mouse. Oh, I love that shit. There's, I, there's another I, what, the YouTube channel I've watched this. It's this white guy who speaks fluent Mandarin, and he goes into Chinese restaurants, and he'll just start speaking fluent Chinese to them. And they're always like blown away. They're like, "Oh yeah, shit, this guy, this guy good. speaks Mandarin and then speaks like Cantonese. Like he speaks like every like literally people will be like introduce him to their friend. Like you speak, he, she's Burmese. Do you know how to speak Burmese? He'll start speaking Burmese. Damn. And then it's like, and then he'll like go up to him and like, "Where are you from?" And they're like, "I'm from Macedonia." He'll start speaking oh, Macedonian. Oh shit! It's shit. crazy. It's the craziest thing ever. I thought my sister, she speaks like nine languages. I thought that was impressive. This is amazing. I, it yeah, reminds me of another story. I have a fleeting memory of when I was like, I was either six or eight. Oh, by the way, Ron, because yeah. you'll, you'll blow your load. He, he can speak uh, Farsi, Arabic, Surmi, uh, Sudan, Arabic, or Sudan, Sudan, Arabic, Assyrian, Somali. Like he can speak oh, shit. Middle Eastern language. Well, this is what I was going to say. I remember, I have this Israel, one her Hebrew one memory of visiting Pakistan when I was a kid, Karachi, where the director's from, and we were in a store. And I remember there was this uh, African man standing in a store, and he starts speaking fluent Urdu, and I'm like, oh shit. oh shit! I did. I didn't expect that. I'd never seen that before. Like he speaks Urdu better than I did. I was like, oh my god. Oh, I guess you don't have to be fucking Pakistani to speak Urdu. That was when my little brain was like, this is a big world. Uh, that's what that. That's cool. I love those kind of those things. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's what I've been watching. Rugs, what have you been watching? Well, if we're talking about YouTube channels, uh, one thing I've been checking out and it's uh, Tasting History, uh -huh. which is like this dude, his name is Max Miller. He goes and looks up these ancient recipes of like what they used to eat in Egypt and Rome, and he would make oh, some. Oh, cool. Oh, that's And he tells you about the history of it. That's just kind of cool. With like the original old school ingredients and stuff. Yeah, like the, the shit that they make is so weird. You Like they flavor fucking cakes with rose petals. Yeah, and yeah. Fucking they have fish oil that they put on everything. Rose it's crazy. water is a big ingredient in hmm. a lot of countries. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. So you should check that out. You could go down the rabbit hole and watch all of this fucking ancient. It's a uh, so that is called, once again, Tasting History. Tasting History. 
Um, now, the other show that I stumbled upon and just binged in one shot was The Cho Show. Who is this? David Cho? This is David the Cho. Artist, like right? fam- the artist who was famous for uh, doing the mural in the in Facebook when they just opened up the first office. And then they like say, do you want me to do you want to get paid or like in money or we could pay you in stock? He said, I'll take the stock. And now he's a billionaire. And then, like. And now he's got like he's he's oh, like got shit. hundreds of millions of dollars. That was a good option, and David Cho. <laughs> so David Cho is just this great like I guess street street artist, artist in general, art it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but he's also just known for being a fucking crazy yes, nut. I've heard stories. And he about like him. he posted up in in Vegas for like a year, just like every day, just spending his money like water, like on hookers, <laughs> like porn stars, <laughs> like gambling, living. just living the li- yeah. like he's because he, he's a he's an addict, like he's addicted oh. to, to he gets addicted to stuff. So he was on Joe Rogan and he like broke down. Oh no! And like was saying he just he was it was like a really crazy interview. Like it was really like one of the things where Joe Rogan's like, okay, I'm just like fucking let this guy cry for a few minutes. But anyway, he decided I got all this money. I'm just gonna fucking make a show. Hmm. So he it's basically he invites. So he OK, so he used to live in this house with his mom and his family and him and his mom don't get along well. Like he I guess he loves his mom, but he hates his mom at the same time. She's like super religious and was like whatever. And also abandoned him as a child. Oh, like shit. sent him off to China, like to live with another family because he was too much of an ex- they needed to cut their expenses. So he just sent the kid to China to another family and then he came back. But he always resented his parents for that. But anyway. So his mom's house, the house that he grew up in, all house where all of this pain um, was became available on the real estate market. So he bought it. Oh, jeez! And he turned it into like this crazy fucking place where he just fucking painted the all the walls, and it just looks like a fucking mess in there. And he just has people over, like actors and stuff, people that he knows, and just talks to them about like it's almost like a therapy session. I, but then yeah. he's he's painting them at the same time. Oh, or, that's right. I saw the trailer portraits for this. Of them. Yes, he's painting yeah. his guest that he interviews. So it's like a interview painting show. Yeah, he's painting them, but then he's doing like weird, like new age breathing techniques. He's like, you know, trying to like, it's really fucking weird. Val Kilmer's on it. And like, and you can see like Al Val, Val Kilmer's not in great shape, yeah. but he's on this thing. So I watched the whole thing. It's like half hour shows. Like it's I just watched H- them all. FX on Hulu it, if you want yeah, to watch it. Yeah, it's that. on Hulu. Um, I also watch also on Hulu is McCartney one two three. So is that good? That, what is that? I heard about this. Is it good? It's Rick Rubin kind of just bullshitting with Paul McCartney, and he's talking about his music, not just the Beatles, but his own stuff. Wings and everything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the cool things that they do is that they have a soundboard there, and they're they, they have the actual reel to reels that they oh. the, the tapes, and you know Rick Rubin's just like talking to Paul, and he's like. All of a sudden, he'll like drop some of the tracks out and go listen to this bass line, listen to this, and they got to go into how each song was constructed. He's got the tracks and, for the Beatles songs there. Yeah, wow. yeah. So it's kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah, I love the Beatles, and, I, I, and Paul McCartney's great. So I wanted to watch um, that. Yeah, I think. It, eh, I mean, look, I've seen so many of these things that yeah. I already know all those stories to all, all these yeah. fucking songs and shit. But you know, it's Rick Rubin. That's like the X factor yeah. that you're getting. Yeah. So I love music uh, documentary series. Is, is yeah. There. So you should. You check it I'm out. They're like half it. hour long. Okay. Each oh, one. it's only half an hour episodes. Okay. I'm going to check that. Yeah. And I watched the rest of the Bad Batch. I love the Bad Batch. Are you enjoying it so far? Bad Batch? I think it's cool. I mean, there's uh, they're raising the stakes. I don't like that everybody looks the same. <laughs> well, they're all clones of each other. Yeah. Well, not only that, but they're all wearing armor that's similar. Yeah, it's hard. Sometimes it's, just, it's hard to tell. Yeah, who's the good guy? Yeah. Who's the bad guy? Now they, have, now they have like this other clone that's kind of. Bowser that, that looks like everybody else. Yeah, but he, does he have a chip or not? I don't know. No, yeah, but he's, he's got a conscience, which I don't understand. Con- I don't know. I, yeah, I don't understand how that works. Does the chip override yeah. the con? I don't know. Hey, and you know, and I didn't mind. They did that thing where, like, there's one episode where the batch isn't even in it to set up a whole conflict with the Twi'leks on whatever that planet, and then the rescue. The I next fell asleep episode. during that episode. Yeah, to be that, honest so, with you, but- yeah, they, none of them were in a one whole episode, and then the second episode, they're in a lot. But I, I do. I love I love the chemistry between them and Omega. I'm enjoying the show. It's a good show. I like how this actually kind of weaves it, the story of like what's happening with the Empire. Like yeah. they're, they're showing the Empire showing up on a planet and like, yep. take like we're taking Occupying over like, basically. the politics yeah. of it. It's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. I'm yeah. enjoying Bad Batch. 
Uh, sure. I call, finally got to watch uh, the real world reunion on Paramount Plus. Mm. Oh my god, oh, this is good. This is fucking good. Which uh, original season? The original season cast comes back twenty nine years later, and I don't know if you watched it. I'm gonna I'll spoil a little bit <laughs> because alert. holy shit, Becky turns out she's the original Karen. Fucking Becky. Hmm. Everybody else comes back. They're all enlightened. It's amazing. You know, Eric Nice, the fucking hot abs guy who hosted The Grind and you thought he was an idiot. This dude is like the wisest, most uh, enlightened, like yoga Zen dude now. It's amazing. I was like, holy shit. And they all are like enlightened except for fucking Becky. Becky's, well, Becky's still white privilege. Becky, Becky. Yeah, Becky comes from privilege. Yeah. And, you know, she, I don't know. It's, I, that was a dicey one for her. But. Yeah, she yeah, she fucking she threw a tantrum. But man, I, I, I didn't completely agree with how they handled because like there is no way to like you like you can't even have a conversation no. No. without being like you're like, oh, I want to I want to converse about this. And you're like, no, you just have to just shut up and take it. It's very that's it. it was very real world, like it very much like it had yeah. in the first season. It's just weird, but like, yeah, she should she she screwed herself. Basically. But man, you watch they play clips of the show, you know, and some of these conversations that Kevin had about race at the time when you play it back, you realize you're like, I you had never seen anything like this on TV before. Just two people talking, it was wild. Like it's not scripted, yet, and it's hard to think. Never seen anything like that. It, I remember it blew me away the first time when they were having those arguments. And and then the second time too, I was like, they're oh, still having, they're them. still having the same <laughs> fucking argument. Yeah, some things don't change, but that's great. And then the other great thing, uh, you know, I mentioned before, CNN did a history of late night docu series about late night talk show. They're doing another series, this one right up my alley, history of the sitcom on CNN. Uh, there's a few episodes out. It's fucking great, but especially since I do the you know the dance of joy, perfect strangers podcast with my sister. Uh, it, I love sitcoms and this, the, the series is good. Just like the late night series. So I would check, I'd recommend that. Yeah. I'm thinking about watching that. It's, it's very good. And yeah, again, I knew a lot of the stories, but there is, there was shit in there. I did not know. So is it, is it good? It's very good. Okay. Cool. <laughs> it's I'll good. Check it yeah. Out. Each episode is like a theme. Like the first one is about families and sitcoms. Second one is about sex and sitcoms. The third one is about friends in sitcoms. Yeah. Uh, but they cover every everything from modern sitcoms to the very early sitcoms. Uh, I love it. So good stuff. And then if you want to go to the theater, you guys, this week you can watch uh, uh, M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, Old, about people getting old. Remember we watched? I can just see that when I look in the mirror. Yeah, that, well, I see that every day, slowly. We watch that trailer, and then Snake Eyes comes out, too, July 23rd. I can't see that in the mirror. Yeah. I think I'll be passing on both of those at the moment. No, I see brown eyes. <laughs> A brown eye girl <laughs> or one brown eye <laughs> anthony you made it how's your voice did you gargle anything i had some water all right good gargle that water you sound more normal now yeah. you probably got warmed up yeah. let's do this whole thing over <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> shit what okay anyways rugs where can the people find you online oh you can find me on twitter at really rug boy you could uh you could peruse my argument with ed greer oh who's ed greer where i Ed Greer is like a guy from like Collider or okay, something. Okay, You've been fighting with He's him. Like Excellent. A, yeah, it, I wasn't even trying to fight him. Like he <laughs> he he posted this thing like all you motherfuckers better shut up because like you know Scarlett Johansson doesn't need to get injured in the movie because look at all these other movies. I'm like yeah, but that's like movies like Fast and the Furious and shit like that. Nobody takes those movies seriously. You want Marvel to like descend to that? <laughs> and he got all pissed <laughs> off. And I'm like, oh, I and then some, up. and then some that's dude the like. Some dude white knighted him, and I'm oh, like, no. "What the fuck, man?" I'm like, and then they started calling me uh, all the names. There's the comic skater, uh, like a, a whiny man, baby man, child. Oh my god, this is fantastic! I hate women. I hate women. Mac led action movies, and so I just like got pissed. I was like, "All right, you want to see receipts?" And I just posted all of like. Oh, when I went on this show, I wanted to talk about women action films. I wanted to talk about. Uh, I ha I just put out this quote about female action, uh, action stars I'm like so you're you're fucking an idiot you're an idiot you're just because someone disagrees with something that you said that was stupid that you want to have characters in movies never get hurt and it's fine this is quite a long thread here very oh, yeah it's really, really long. there make sure you follow rugs 
Yeah, at me, yeah. bro. Oh, you got into it with and the make edgier. sure that you know. Oh yeah, but I love it when I can take somebody who's like a professional and just make and ruin their night. It's <laughs> it's fucking is great for me. And I'm not even insulting them. They're yeah. insulting me. Yeah, yeah. You take the high road. I'm just yeah. I always take the high road if I can. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I might I might post a gif that like that'll be like the the low blow usually, but like, but <laughs> oh, hey man, yeah. that's why you follow me, right? At really rug boy, this is a great <laughs> thread. Rugs, well done. <laughs> uh, you can follow us to uh, visit the show notes for links to everything. Subscribe and share the show, listener. Spread the jock and nerd word, and we'll be your best friends. Thanks for listening to the jock and nerd podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. We'll beep you next time. Be more funny. Fucking fantastic. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. Jock and nerd. <laughs>